Hi, it's Kerner Tex here again with the fifth part in the series of videos about building Beyond Linux from scratch. So if you remember in the previous videos we've um, done some more configuration to the Linux from system um, image. We've um, built up X Windows, which is the actual Xorg package together with a load of other support packages for the um, applications and further packages we're installing currently and will be installing. We've installed two desktop managers, LightDM and LXDM, and two window managers, Fluxbox and ISWM. So in this video, I'll be uh, going through the installation of two desktop environments, which are um, a little bit uh, more involved, they've got their own apps, um, a little bit more heavyweight but still very very lightweight compared to um, things like GNOME and KDE. Um, if there's time today I may install uh, one or two other apps um, but we'll see how we go with these, with these two desktop environments. So uh, uh, also if you remember in the last video um, we're in a position now where we can um, load a graphical browser and have a graphical X term graphical terminal. So we, we have no need for the host machine anymore to copy and paste commands. Um, and if this was a real machine that you're building beyond Linux from scratch, it, it would just purely be everything done on, on this machine now, assuming you had everything working, such as the video, the mouse, the keyboard, etc. and the network. So let's start by booting the BLFS image. So again, it seems that we've got this little problem still with VirtualBox graphical driver where it boots to a smaller resolution screen so to get around that I'll just log in as BLFS and log out and that seems to reset it when it loads up the um, desktop manager so let's re-log in and we should have a full screen again we have. So next let's load up CMonkey the browser. Okay that's remembered where we were because we changed the settings if you remember it was under edit preferences and there's an op option there restore previous session and let's load up a terminal to work in. Um, I'll, actually what I'll do is what I did yesterday which is I'll just run top in the background in one X term just to monitor this is something I was actually doing on another screen while we're going through Linux from scratch and uh, the previous packages in beyond Linux from scratch um, not so much during this recording um, but certainly while I was um, testing certain packages to ensure that we had enough memory and that's why I gave the warning about 4 gigabyte being an absolute minimum for some of the bigger packages with, with 4 cores. Um, but as I say, I've, I've set up 8 here so it should be okay but um, just want to keep an eye on things. And it's also nice to know that the builds are running in parallel. Um, you can see obviously when all, all the cores are active the, the bar graph goes right right to the other side. So that, that's obviously optional. Incidentally, um, I think I may have mentioned yesterday that LXDE has got some little graphs down there, but they're very, very tiny. Um, they're purely for an indication to see what the system's doing rather than actually getting any useful information out of them because they're so tiny. Um, but as you can see, they're, they're black at the moment. There's, there's nothing going on. So let's get another terminal up, and I'll just expand that a bit. And see a bit more history on the screen at once and we'll start with going into sources and BLFS 
So the first desktop environment we'll go to is XFCE. Um, let's try and locate that in this contents. Okay, it's towards the end. So it's section 9 XFCE. So let's um, actually I'll keep this contents up. I'll center click this to bring it up in a new tab. So XFCE, so there's the contents for XFCE. Let's move on to the next bit. Gives a little description about XFCE and the philosophy behind um, what why it exists. So let's start building this now. Because this is a kind of a complete suite of packages, what I'm going to do is the same as has been done with some of the other sections we've been doing. For example, the X Windows X Org system. It's in a separate directory. Same with looks like oh that's a just just a package directory actually. Um, just going to create a separate directory for these packages. So first of all I'm going to remove that flux box which seems to have been left behind. And then create a, an XFCE directory and change into it. Now I seem to remember yesterday a couple of these um, packages we downloaded, yes there's already some highlighted here, they see the link has changed colour to show that we've already visited it so let's just locate these and put them in this directory and then we can check that we can actually skip them, that there's no other dependencies that we may have installed since they were installed. Okay, let's try an ls. So the first one's lib xfce in fact, there's two like this. Uh, let's have a look at them. Yep, they're there. So let's move those. Into the XFC directory. Um, and XCONF. Let's see if we can do this like this. XFCONF. Yep, that's there as well. So we can move that into this directory as well. And EXO. Okay. So there's the four files that are actually got different color links. So it looks like libxfce 4 util is quite a straightforward package, so we won't install that again. That doesn't seem to be any need to. XFConf, again, there doesn't seem to be any reason. We've already installed Dbus Glib, so let's just skip that one. Lib XFCE 4UI, again, we've got all these things installed as an optional package here, but um, not going to bother with that one, it's optional. Not sure exactly what that would provide us. EXO again, we've installed all of these, so let's go on to the next one Garcon or Garson. Incidentally, I have once built BLFS, building everything that's in the BLFS book, all the optional packages that listed the required and the recommended, and it's even more involved, you, you get tied up with dependencies even more, it's a lot, lot more complicated. Um, and obviously if you want to do it as a challenge, quite welcome to, but uh, I would suggest that you only install optional packages where you think you really need to, as, as we've been doing. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite a session to to go through and install every single package. And probably unnecessary as well, a lot of the optional packages. And uh, I'm not sure, I can't quite remember, but you may even come across a conflict. Um, now, that may not be on the current BLFS, because the last time I built BLFS was probably 10 years or so ago. Um, and I vaguely remember there being a, a case where it, the manual said, you know, if you've installed this package, you can't install this package. And 
or vice versa or some, something, you know, the order. I don't, I don't know exactly now, but there was something like that. So that, that situation may not exist anymore or, or it could well exist. So that's worth bearing in mind if you do decide to go for the whole hog. So let's do this package. It needs one of the libraries we've already got installed plus the two GTKs which we've got and the optional GTK doc which I can't remember if we've got that now or not but we're not really building the documentation um, because most of it seems to be API stuff, the optional. Let's just double check if we have got it just a future reference. Well, yes, we have we have got it in fact. So um, th th there is the option there to to build, but for API documentation, it's um, stuff that de developers need, and it's not really appropriate to what we're doing here. So let's get this package. Um, I apologise about the size of the fonts. Let me see. Yeah, I don't think there seems to be any. No, there's no right click in the window. There doesn't seem to be any option to increase the size of the font. Um, so I hope it's visible. Um, whether there's a startup option for Xterm. Um, actually, let me just try. There's another Xterm there. UX term. Let's see if that's got any different options. No, it looks the same actually. There's no right click. No. Um, so I hope it's uh, not too small. Let me Get a new tab up. Let's um, see if we can increase the size of font. There might be a command line option to do it. But finding your home directory named X resources to store premises whereas X programs depend on the file such as. Okay, well, we can try that. Um, let's do it here. So let's push. Oh, we'll be coming out of this window in case I'll have to re restart it. Um, so CD to the home directory. Create a file in your home directory named dot x resources so vi dot x resources press enter and it says copy something like this so let's see what that does oops window so let's see if just starting next term does anything no so it could be that, because that's called accession, it could be that I've got to restart the um, LXDE session. Uh, so, yeah, the, the LXDE session. No, sorry, we're not on LXDE. The ISWM we're on, aren't we? The uh, window. So let's shut that down and close that one. And let's quit and re-log in. No, I don't seem to have done anything. Right, okay, I'll have to, rather than mess around, I'll just go with it. Make sure I'm deleting the right one here. Yeah. And, uh, if it is an issue, then um, 
maybe I can do re redo the recording. Um, what I want to do is actually open up Sea Monkey first, and that's just so X term gets placed in the right place automatically. Uh, system. I've just tried control and the mouse wheel and that's not doing anything either. So as I hope hopefully it's uh, it is visible. So let's go into this XFCE and then Garson or Garcon. So this has got a simple make configure and make so let's put that in. and make install ok so that's that package done actually I've just had a thought um, this is a bit of a diversion um, and it might be worth trying. I vaguely remember Xterm can have a toolbar, so that's probably a configure command when when it's being built to enable that toolbar. So I'm gonna have a quick look at that, um, see if there is an option there by rebuilding it. So let's find Xterm. LX terminal that is. So it's part of LXDE, which is the second desktop environment we're gonna install. I might actually just go straight for that. <laughs> but let's try this X term. Get the options to build it. Uh, did I ever no I didn't. So let's do tarm on X XVF. Next term. Oh, right, this will be under XC, won't it? Yeah. So let's put in these commands first. And then if we do configure minus minus help. And as I think I've said in one of the previous videos, most configures allow you to do this to see what other options there are to alter, either alter how configure works or to set paths for libraries. Some, there's sometimes I've had the odd occasion where a library's not been found, and just by specing the path to the library or specing the library file itself, um, this can help configure work. So let's pipe that through less. And let's see what options we've got. So yeah, um, as at the top, you can see that these these options are normally pretty standard in in configs, uh, configure um, programs. But the further down you go, you start to get um, options which are uh, more appropriate to what you're building. So for example, there's a reference there that with with Xterm symlink. You can see a lot of these are to point with. Uh, to point to actual directories where certain things will be found. So, for example, if you've installed icons in a non-standard location, or you want to use some which aren't are in a non-standard location, you could use that option and tell the configure for Xterm where those icons are. So let's have a quick scan down here. stuff about default terminals there. Just scroll it up a bit more.
didn't actually see anything there. Let's try grabbing it. Okay, right, it was there, I just missed it. There's so many options. So if we add enable toolbar to the configure statement, then hopefully we'll get the toolbar. I'm pretty sure there's some options for font size and so on, and even font selection. So let's copy this config. Check that there's no other options that we've added previously. So term info standard with that default set standard as well. So let's paste that in and add in this enable toolbar option. So it's probably a, this is quite a good demonstration of how you can actually adjust the BLFS build to, to suit your own circumstances, how you can fine tune it. Although I would suggest if it's the first time you are building BLFS, just go through with the standard um, standard stuff that's in the book rather than tweaking things. Do, do that when you've had some experience of building it. Um, okay, so let's run make. There's no f failures or errors with that configure. And we'll run these in. We'll redo these copy commands. You never know if something's changed in what's been created. So this copy command will just overwrite the existing stuff. Obviously, if you suspect that something's changed there, something might be overwritten that you've adjusted yourself, you may want to inspect what's going to be changed. So let's paste that in, install, let's come out and let's, let's run xterm to see what happens. Okay, it says unable to load any usable ISO 8859 font. That doesn't sound very good. Let's see if it works from here. No, I wonder if we've broken it now. <laughs> um, no font found. I wonder if it is because we've turned that switch on and it needs um, another switch to oh is it this bit here right let, well, let's do this in case this is what's missing uh, so let's become the root again paste that in come out and go next turn no it doesn't like that so it could be this configure command needs another Sorry, um, I need to get that configure command back down to time. Just trying to think what I need to do. Let's have another look at the help. Enable load VT font section. Um not sure what that does. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll just recompile it without the toolbar. I'll have to make do with the fonts as they are, unfortunately. So let's 
let's actually start with a clean source directory. A root and copy this again. Oh, actually, it looks like a I know, yeah, it looks like we're appending this all the time, so that's probably not a good thing either. Let's Just check that. Uh, no, it does look. All oh, right, I see what's happened. It's um, oh, it looks like some settings here actually. It looks like um this is being installed afresh so this command is actually appending it's not appending stuff to a file that's being having stuff appended to it again yeah there's the stuff that's just been appended um, forgive the colors here I'm just gonna have a quick look there they're obviously um, they're obviously bright colours and against the white background they're a bit hard to see. So there is something called toolbar there. Same thing now that would activate it. So let's try it again, make sure it runs. Yeah, it runs this time. So obviously that toolbar needs some other configuration, a toolbar setting. So um, I think the best thing is to, I'm not gonna waste time looking to try and find out what setting I need to get that toolbar working. I think what I might do is install well, let's have a look at it anyway LX terminal see what that needs and if it doesn't need too much I'll install that now because I'm pretty sure that's got the option to resize the font it's a little bit more advanced so it needs VTE and I think we've got the rest of these and so let's see what VTE requires GTK2 object introspection doc PY GTK2 we haven't got that one and then we need PYG object and Python 2 we've got 80k needs okay so it needs quite a bit but these are small modules and I think it'll be worth it to install this because it will be easier to to see what's on the screen if you've got a smaller screen so we need that one we've got Pango that will be installed, that is installed, that will be installed. We've got libglade, libglade. Okay, so. Um, so that needs Cairo, I think we've got Cairo. So we have yet. So that's okay. 
Hang on, it's font config free type half bus for pretty glib Cairo Xorg. Some fonts for tests are optional, so don't need anything else there. But I thought we would install Pango. Let's check that one. Yeah, we have, so we can get rid of that. <coughs> ATK230, I think we've got that one as well. Here we have. PY object, GD, PY Cairo, Python. So we've got that one. And that's the one with a lot of requirements. So, um, yeah, I think we can do this. XDE, that's part of that XDE as well. So it looks like we just need three. Python modules plus these this VTE package and LX terminal. So uh, let's do these five packages and like I say I think it will be um, just make it easy for you to read what, what's on the screen because I think this is probably a bit too small. In fact I might make can I make this bigger for you? Yeah, let's make this a little bit bigger for you as well. That might make it easy to read. Um, yep, so this first one, let's just check what it needs again. Yep, those dependencies are okay. Copy the link, paste it in. This one's called PY Cairo. So, with a lot of these Python modules, there's two installations, there's one for Python 2 and one for Python 3, so we will do both of them because we've got both versions of Python installed just so that the um, modules available to both versions ok that's built, so come the root Okay, let's quit that. Build the Python 3 version. Then become the root again. Okay, that's that done. Is this py object module that we need? Yeah, it is. So I fetch that file, extract it. Okay, I've got a couple of options here. One to disable the introspection. I meant to switch if you installed it, which we have, but this conflicts with PYG object 330 and disable docs. This option disables rebuilding of the HTML documentation if a LibXSLT is installed. So we can actually put that in because we've got LibXSLT. So this will make the compilation a little bit quicker, although. Oh, sorry, what have I done there? Press space bar, didn't I? Although, um, I, I don't imagine it would uh, save much time, but we'll, we'll stick it in anyway. So this looks like this is PY got there's two here, PY object 2.287 we're building. So that's probably for Python 2. So let's make that. Just double check. Yeah, it's version two we need. 
So let's install that. Uh, command. Okay, that's done. So now we do PYGTK 2.24. So let's quick check of the dependencies again. We've just installed that. We had in, we've already got Python 2. ATK we've got. Pango we've got. Cairo we've just installed with Pango. We've already had Cairo, GTK2 we've got. Cairo and Libglade we've got. And we've got the optional LibXSLT. So we can install this. Now there's an extra command here for the configure enables rebuilding the HTML documentation so it sounds like a similar option to before if we don't put it in it won't rebuild the documentation so we'll leave it off and as you can see it says it's found all the dependencies um, we haven't got numpy but numpy is off the BLFS instructions so We'll keep that as it is. Let's make. You can see on this top screen here that's hiding behind the um, browser that although we've started it, the make with four cores it's it's not using all of them at once in fact there's only one thread running at the moment one core running but at least we know it's doing something that's built so let's install it and that's complete so the next one is VTE now VTE is part of the LXDE application suite so I'm going to again create a directory to keep all of these um, packages which are in this section in, in one place. So LXDE. So let's fetch this. And we've got some switches down there, libexec, uh, okay, they're the switches already in the in the config statement, so we'll just accept that. Oh, the, yeah, this, this is quite important, this switch is saying that this both this patch, package and VT 0.54.3 install files of the same name. So that's ensuring that the, um, if both packages installed, that the files are, aren't overwritten by one or the other. So let's run the configure and the make. And we shall install it now. So that's complete.
and now we can install LX Terminal again. It's part of the LXD application suite, so we'll download it in the LXD directory we've created. So configure, we've got one extra op um, switch here, another option, enable man, use the switch if you installed optional dependencies and wish to build the manual pages, so we've got all three of these, so why not build some manual pages, they'll be useful, useful reference. So let's add that to the configure command. Enable man. Okay, it's not complained that it hasn't found the optional dependencies, proving that they're there. So we can type build in now. Oh, sorry, make to build it, and it's done. So install it. And tidy up. So let's see if we can run this. So you can see this is using the more usual black background for the terminal and we've got a menu bar as well so let's just have a quick look to see what we've got here there's a preferences on that edit one and we can zoom in and zoom out as well so that's probably good enough to do I think that's quite a nice size Let's just have a quick look at preferences. So we've got colours and let's have a cur blinking cursor so that can catch the eye a lot more. Um, audible bell. You won't be able to hear anything because I've got a um, set of headphones on, so only I'll be able to hear that. Um, we've got a default window size, or at least we've got 80 columns in case we need to go into the uh, uh, menu, the kernel uh, menu configuration editor, so that's okay, we don't want to hide any of these things here. Uh, I think that's okay, so let's save that. Move that over. Let's get rid of this one. Um, right, so I've started LX Terminal, and you can see the prompt's not here because that, that program's running at the moment. So what I'll do is, if you press Control Z, which stops that process running, you see I can't type into that or click it, the, the cursor is a, a square rectangle. If you type BG, that puts that process into the background and allows it to continue running. You can see it's just woken up again. And in fact, that's probably, I imagine, Xorg that's been buffering the keyboard and the mouse movement and that's why those characters have appeared as soon as the um, process has been um, re-enabled um, from its suspended state when I typed in BG to put it in the background and you can see it's actually come up here with the command that you type at the prompt to start it and put it into the background which is the name of the um, program for by space and an ampersand, and the ampersand means put it into the background, run it in the background. So if you've come from a Windows environment, it's slightly different because if you start any program from the command prompt in Windows, it automatically goes into a background process. So it's slightly different from yeah, in Linux from Windows. You have to tell it that you want it to run in background. So I can close this window down now. For some reason it's not shut down so I'll yep, get rid of it there let's move this over a little bit so they meet nicely and I can carry on and notice also it's retained the location from where I ran at X terminal originally I haven't had to change directory or anything it's it's just started from the directory that LX terminals run from so that's quite a nice touch 
So we can shut that down and carry on with our installation of X XFCE desktop environment. So we go up one and back down to the XFCE directory to install this XFCE engine. So the requirements GTK2 recommended GTK3 so we're fine here let's fetch the package Okay, so there's no extra options for the configure, so we'll just copy and paste the configure and make command in. And install the package. Okay, let's tidy up. And move on to the next one. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this one, so I'll just call it libwnck. Window Navigator Construction Kit. So it needs GTK2, we've got that. Startup notification we've got, introspection we've got, and GTK, GTK doc we've got. So we're all good to download that. Right, so the config command, we've got some explanations here. Let's just double check them. Disable static, pretty um, pretty normal, pretty standard. Program suffix equal minus one. Add the minus one to the end of the names of the installed programs to avoid overwriting programs installed by libwnck3.30. Okay, so there's two different versions of this package in, in the BLFS book, so that's how they're getting around the problem on this package and same thing for the option for the make and then we've got an enable GTK doc for the API documentation so I think we can just copy and paste this as it is Okay, and now we can install it. That's done. So next is XFC for panel. So we can see we've already got all of these packages because the links have already all been colored differently so I think we can go ahead and download this so again there's an enable GTK doc if you would wish to build the API documentation apart from that it, we can just copy the configure and make command as it is Right, and we can now install that. Successful build. And 
And that's done. So the next one is XFC E4 XKB plugin. And this needs librsvg, which I'm pretty sure we've got, but we'll check anyway. Yep, that's there, and I think we did that one in the previous video, and that one's just been built, so we're okay to download this. So there's an explanation there about the set command and disable debug. So we can copy all this in that's just explaining what's already there. And let's install that. So that's complete. And we move on to Thunar, and Thunar is like a file manager, so that's something we haven't got at the moment, is a file manager. So it kind of shows how we're building up functionality of the whole system, just building on, on top of what we've got previously, just building new stuff. So what does this need, XO and libxfce for you I've got. Gnome icon theme. Not sure if we've got that. Let's double check. Right, we've got Gnome's themes extra, but not the icon theme. And we haven't got the LXDE icon theme, so let's grab both of those. LibGUDev. Um, yeah, we've got that one. LibNotify. No, we haven't got that one. I think I'll search for that one just to be doubly sure. Uh, no, so I need to get that one up. And there's a few um, options there. This one might be useful GVFS for remote browsing and auto mounting. Um, I believe that's something to do with images. Not sure what Tumblr is. So let's start with libnotify. Interesting, this needs... Okay, these are runtime requirements. So XFC E4 Notify D. Let's just check that's something we will be installing. It looks like it will be. Uh, sorry, what was it again? XFC for notified D. XFC for notified D. I can't, oh yes, there it is right at the end of the applications. So that's as it's runtime. Unless it complains at configuration like we saw once before. Uh, the book stated that something is required at runtime, but it actually couldn't compile without it. Um, we won't install that. We'll do that when we come to it. Um, notification deem. Not sure about that one. No, we haven't got that either. So we'll install that because it will be needed at runtime. Um, Gnome Shell and KDE KWIN provide their own notification demons. So this will be purely for. XFCE and it sounds like LXDE may may use this as well if it uses notification. So notification daemon required GTK3 and lib Canberra, which has been built with GTK3 support. So I don't think we've got lib Canberra. No, we haven't. So 
we need to build that and ensure we're building GTK3 support if it's a separate switch. So this needs lib Vorbis we've got, also lib we've got, G Streamer I think we've got. Yep. GTK3 we've got and then some optional. Right, so it looks like it automatically picks up GTK3 and GTK2 for that matter because it, it's got to disable switches. So obviously we won't be using them. And as it says here, OSS has been deprecated for some while now, so we won't be using that switch. So let's start. This looks like the bottom of the dependency hierarchy. So let's start doing this. Now, libcamber is not part of XFCE, so I'm going to go up one directory and fetch the package from here. So we just copy the configure and make command. Right, I've just pressed control S to stop the terminal because I thought it might do this. It's printed up a status of the configuration. Just wanted to check it, check that it's going to pick up GTK3 as it was a necessity for notifications daemon and there it says enable GTK3 plus yes um, and just if we have a quick look at the other things you can see it's got pulse audio because we've got that um, built it's not using its own built-in one so it means it's going to use the system one again same with that ALSA G streamer you can see it's picked up these libraries so that's that's fine. So I'm going to press Control Q now to let the build continue, and that's done. So we can install it. So let's tidy that up now. and go on to notification daemon again this is not part of LXDE so I'm just downloading this in the standard BLFS directory so there's no um, extra explanations about the configure command so we'll just copy and paste the configure and the make okay so we can now make install as the root user and that's done so it says here we can test the notification daemon with the command notify send so let's try that and it should pop up with a little message. And I can't see anything, so it looks like it doesn't work on um, ISWM maybe. Let's try once more. No, I can't see anything. Let's try this root. No, that's not worked either. So it could be that uh, this environment won't allow that to happen. So let's move on. Uh, Let's clear this up first. And build this lib notify. So this is probably just again, yeah, it's a standard library. 
we'll just uh, build it in the download it and build it in the BLFS directory. So I'll just a quick check of the requirements again, the dependencies. They're all satisfied apart obviously from this one. Um, but as I say, that's a runtime requirement. Unless the package complains about this, we won't install it until we need to. So again, usual uh, command explanations, which we, we're not interested in. So we'll just configure and make as it is in the book. And now we can make install. And that's done. So now we've got an LXD icon theme. And strangely enough, it's not within the LXD part of the uh, uh, section of the manual. It's just under the icon, so I'm just going to go with what the manual, how the manual has um, catalogued, if you like, these packages and just keep it in the BLFS uh, build directory. So let's copy that link. I suppose you could argue if it's, or well, you can see the download is from the LXDE project on SourceForge, so arguably it should be in the um, LXDE directory but I'm just going to go with what the manual's got for consistency there. So there's no extra options for configure mentioned so let's just copy that in. That's it, so it's just a make install to install it. And it says if you've installed one of the optional dependencies, GTK 2 and 3, they are, or 3, you need to run the following command as the root user. So let's do that. That's done. Okay, and now we've got GNOME icon theme. Right, so this has got some requirements. Um, high color icon theme, that sounds familiar. Yeah, we've got that one. And icon naming utils, which I don't think we've got. No, so we need to do that one. This needs XML simple, which looks like a Perl module to me. It is XML simple. Let's just check the version of this because this link didn't jump to the right place. Uh, 2.25. So that's 099. Right. Did I jump down too far? Let me do that again. Yeah, it's jumped to the wrong place. Yeah, it's further down. XML simple 2.25. XML simple 2.25. That's why that was a bit confusing. So, um,. There's an optional dependency of XML SACS. Otherwise, so it says there's an alternative parser. Otherwise, the XML parser which was installed in LFS will be used. So we, we might as well just go with that if it's already got the functionality there. Unless you have a particular reason for installing this package instead and using it. So let's grab that module.
So just copy and paste these three commands. Tests are passed, we can install it. Let's tidy up, remove that tab, and now we can install icon naming utils. So standard configure and make and make install so I'll tidy that up clear the tab down and now we can build the gnome icon theme package again these are all just within the standard BLFS location Obviously it's up to you where, you where you put your packages and extracts and how you manage that. Uh, okay, so let's extract that. Again, just standard configure prefix equals user and make and then make install Okay, so that's complete. Let's tidy up. Shut that tab down. Now I can install Thunar. Right, that's got a capital C, that has. And I've just realized this should be in the XFCE desktop, so let's move. I've just extracted and downloaded it into the BLFS directory, so let's move both of them into the um, XFCE directory. And then change there before we do anything else. So there's no extra option, so I'll just copy and paste the config and make it again. Okay, so we can now install that. And tidy up. So let's see if we can find that. Look like this has been updated. Maybe a command we need to run to 
um, update the menu. Although I do remember reading, we read, I think, in the previous video that one of these um, window managers needs um, yeah needs a command one one updates automatically. I think one needed command to be run to update the menu system. So that could be why that's not there. Let's just run it from the command line here to see it's in action. There it is. So as I say, this is the first time we've installed um, any form of file manager. Um, and it won't be the first either. So you can see there's all the devices here and it's even got the virtual um, directories that are mounted listed as devices. <coughs> There's our home directory there. So we've run it from sources BLFS X, XFCE and as LX Terminal did, it ran and, and used that path where it was run from as the default location, which is why we can see all the packages um, that we've downloaded in the XFCE directory. Um, so this icon here is the home directory for the user so you can see that there there's a link there to take us directly to the directly to the desktop directory and so on looks like we can browse a network there as well if we wanted to which we won't do now so that looks like that works fine so next we've got Thunar volume manager and it's an extension to the Thunar file manager and enables automatic management and removal of removable drives and media. So this will be things like CDs and uh, USB sticks and so on. So uh, the requirements, we've got XO, we've got libgudev, we've got this xfc 4 ui we've got libnotify, startup notification we've got now I think, haven't we? Sure, we've already checked that today. Yeah. Recommended runtime GVFS. I think that's a known virtual file system, so that that may be useful. Um, oh, actually, there are recommended runtime. So yes, we will we will install these things are recommended. So let's bring those two up and pull it. No, I don't think we've installed that. No, we haven't. So let's grab that as well. So we can see we've got Polkit 0.115. We know we've got GTK3, so we can go straight away install this package. Oh, okay, so I've done this all the other way around now. Both of these should not be in XFCE because they're not technically part of it. So let's move the directory and the tar file back up one and then move back up one and then go into the directory we just created. So there's no fancy configuration here so we just copy again and copy the configure and make commands. And we'll install it as well. So configuring Polkit GNOME automatic startup for the authentication framework to work. Polkit GNOME authentication agent one needs to be started. However, make install did not install a startup for the Polkit GNOME. So you have to create one by yourself. Create it by yourself. So issue the following commands as a root user to create a startup file for Polkit GNOME. So let's become the root and copy and paste that okay that's all that needs so GVFS okay this needs a few uh, or has a few dependencies so Dbus we've got, let's check these just to be sure, but pretty certain we've got Dbus. Yeah. Glib we've got Lib USB I think we've got. Yep. 
Lip secret. I don't think we've got that one. Nope, so we need that one. Lip soup. I'm pretty sure we've not got that one. Nope. GCR. Don't think we have that. No. GTK3 we have. Libs CDIO we haven't. Libgu dev we have. Let's just see it with our own eyes. We have. And U disks we haven't. No. And then there's several optional packages there which you may or may not want. So U disks, right, looks like we're getting into a big list of dependencies here again. Um, lib ATA smart, I don't think we have that, no. Lib block dev, no. Lib GU dev we've checked, lib XSLT we have, Polkit we have. Required at runtime, ButterFS progs, I don't think we have that. No. Dbus we have, let's just check there's not two different versions. No. DOSFS tools. No. GPTF disk. These are all kind of utility based things for managing disks, so things we haven't done anything with these. This is why we're not finding them. I know we haven't got MDA, MDADM and I know we haven't got XFS progs. Uh, we've got that one, but we're not building Dome, but it's there anyway. So let's go to the end of this lot XFS progs. Okay, so this one hasn't got any dependencies. Let's start with this one. Right, so to use this, we need to compile in XFS file system support. Now, I presume beings. Oh no, it does say required at runtime. That's interesting. I thought these, these might have been optional, but they are requirements. So we will have to go into the kernel and do some modifications. And I think we may have several beings. There's several. Uh, for example, the DOSFS tools will be a kernel. Yeah, you can see kernel configuration. So let's get another window up with the kernel menu. Uh, in fact, we can do another tab. Can we? Yes, we can. That's handy. So let's become the root user first. CD sources and the Linux directory and make menu config. Right, so this isn't actually 80 columns by the looks of it, according to menu. And there's nothing here that says, oh yes, down the bottom it says it's 80. Right, it's actually 79 it was set at. So let's run that again. Um, I'll just do this again at the bottom. There's, it's down here, it's appearing again like it did before when I resize the window. You can see the geometry as I move it. So as long as the first number where it says 80x, is large is equal to or larger than 80 then you won't get that error so let me just move that over a little bit now the rendering this happens on uh, KDE console 2 the rendering goes a bit haywire you can see there's these extra bits of blue that shouldn't be here and the uh, like for example that vertical bar that should be way over here to complete that vertical line there. Um, I've done some research on this on the net and it seems it's down to the uh, uh, the term variable which I think we tried to adjust yesterday. Oh, I'll just try to run xterm. Yeah, that should be an echo term. Uh, and the thing to do with this is to change it. So remember we use the command called tow to list the terminals but there's quite a few there um, 
so I'm not sure what would be good to use. Um, there are other X-term ones, so I guess we could try one of those. Uh, let's try. Let's try this X-term new one. It says a modern X-term terminal emulator. So if we export term in capitals equals and then paste that X term new in and then bring back the menu config command. Now that's still failing. So maybe all the X term ones are broken in the same way. Um, Yeah, let's try ANSI. That might be one. That's kind of the one that Windows uses. Oh no, that looks horrible. <laughs> That's even worse. Uh, in fact, Using that has disabled my page up and page down key, so that's definitely a not not good terminal. Uh, oh, let's try Putty. There's one here for Putty, which is the Windows terminal emulator. Uh, yeah, see, there's one there just called Putty. Let's try that one. Yeah, that's better. That's a good one to use. So that's fixed all this extraneous blue that was around and all the verticals are in the right place. So another problem with not changing this is when those areas where the blue lines are, if there's text there, then the text gets left behind when the menu updates and then it's kind of hard to read what should be read. So for example, we might have gone to a menu where there was some text in this region of the screen and then you'd be coming back here and you'd read pressing Y and then whatever's written there and it kind of gets really confusing so it's it's probably a good idea to to change that X term and you may even want to set that into the profile to make it a permanent change so anyway let's go back to this XF progs and we need to go into file systems and either build in or make the XFS file system support a module so file systems is near the bottom of this first menu and there's XFS file system support there's nothing there so it's not set at the moment um, and I'm going to set this as a module because I don't use the XFS file system so by setting it as a module we've got the capability for the program as it as it needs it but being as a module it won't be taking up any space until we actually try to, to access a file system or use the XFS utilities so I'll just press M here uh, I'm not bothered about the rest of this like I said I'm not going to be using this it just needs file system support which is what the, the books telling us obviously if you are using it you you'd want to look into whether these other options are appropriate to you or not so I'm going to leave this here I'm not going to save or anything just leave this here because as I say we, we will be doing other configurations in the kernel for these some of these other packages because they're all file system based and hopefully uh, there is another potential problem here the configuration or the make the actual building of these files could be looking at the Linux sources as part of the build so I'm hoping that that isn't going to be the case uh, some programs if they build modules will need to access to the source or if they need to know information about the kernel um, but we'll, if that happens we'll deal with it when it comes to it but I'm hoping that won't be the case so we'll go back to the build directory the source directory of XFS progs we've set this in the kernel so let's do this make command let's see if there's any other options here so we've got install users root that's 
explained there. Local configure options. Enable read line. What does it say that? Okay, it's just so that we use the Libre, uh, Lib read line library, which I think read line was installed in LFS. And then there's an op optimizer parameter it says to add to the end of make, which overrides the default optimization settings. Well, there's been no uh, suggestion of what we could put in there by the BLFS team, so we won't bother with that then. Again, if, if it's something you're interested in uh, looking into, that's something you can do. So we'll just copy that as it is and build it. Okay, so now let's become the user to install it. Okay, that's done. Oh, was there another one there? No, there wasn't. So, MDADM is used for creating software raids. Uh, there's a caution here about kernel versions. Well, obviously we're not using that version. The, I'm sure the BLFS team would have not not allowed that uh, the book to be written with um, one of these kernel versions. So it's just a warning, I guess, if you if you do need to use an earlier version of the kernel for your own application, that um, They've got broken RAID implementation, so it's a nice a nice warning to be aware of. So, yeah, we're using I think was it four dot four dot two R? I can't remember now. Let's uh, is it U name minus R? Yeah, oh four dot twenty dot twelve. So we're way ahead of that. That's fine. So there's no dependencies. Let's fetch it. and extract it and change to it. So we've got kernel configuration to do. Um, so we need to go to our other terminal. This time we need to exit this file systems uh, branch of the configuration. So let's exit. We need to go to device drivers which is just above and then find the option that says multiple device devices driver support RAID and LVM so it's somewhere about halfway down I think or maybe a little bit further have I missed it? yeah I've gone too fast oh there it is it's, it's halfway down the first page so it's already checked so it's already built in so we just need to press enter RAID support is already checked. Oh, wrong window. So you can see there it's already got a star in it, it's already built in. Auto detect, auto detect RAID arrays during kernel boot is already checked. And then the next five options are for the type of RAIDs that you would be creating. Um, now, again, unless you know you're going to be using MDADM to create software software arrays um, it's probably not worth checking any of these um, I if I'd been doing these videos about 10 years ago I, I would have done a separate video on using MDADM and how you can manage an array of disks create different arrays um, but since ZFS has been around uh, 
I'm, I'm planning on doing some videos on on using ZFS. It's far more far more advanced. MDADM is good, but it hasn't got the um, integrity checking and uh, well, basically the functionality that MDADM has got. MDADM is good for getting to know uh, how RAID works and so on. Um, plus, there's also been some issues around uh, RAID five and how Apparently, there's uh, what they call a, a hole can be created where there's a chance of data being lost, a very, very slim chance. But despite that, there's still a chance that data can be lost. I don't know if that's been fixed or not, or if that problem still exists. But I, I stopped using MDADM a long time ago, and I use ZFS now. Um, and so I, I am planning on doing a ZFS video. So. I won't be I won't be setting any of these raids myself. Uh, it's up to you if you need to set these. Uh, as I said, if it was ten years ago, I would be setting them purely to do a, a demonstration on using MDADM. So we can leave them, or we could even just put an M in so they're there to use if we wanted to. So I may, I may just do that, but like, like I say, I'm not I'm not going to be using MDADM at all. So. That's those options done. So let's go back and let's start building the package. So first is a said to fix a build error with the later version of GCC. And now we can build it. And it says if you are running tests, you've got to ensure the kernel supports RAID. So if that were the case that we were running tests, we would have to build the kernel, reboot, um, and then we could run the tests, but we're, we're not doing the tests, so we can carry on. So first fix the test script, right, that's for testing, so we can skip that. Now run the test as a root user, so we're just doing make install to install the package. And that's done. So next is GPTF disk. This needs something called popped, which we haven't got, I don't think. No, but we have got ICU 63, yep. So let's get popped up. That hasn't got any requirements, any dependencies, so let's go ahead and download it and build it. So it's a pretty normal configure and make. There's no extra command explanations. So let's begin that. And install it. And that's complete. So now we can build GPTF disk. Right, that took a while to connect, so let's extract it now. And it says, oh, sorry, we didn't download the extra patch, did we? Did see that and it didn't register in my head, so let's get the patch file. Okay. Yep, so it's saying that it's it, the patch is to create a simple build and install interface because of a rudimentary um, make file. So let's just run that patch in and run the make. 
and we can install it. And that's it, nice and simple. So now we do DOS FS tools. So there's no requirements other than some kernel configuration. So let's fetch the package and extract it. So again, I'm a bit puzzled as to why these are required, but I mean, something like DOS FS tools, most people wouldn't have anything to do with DOS these days. Um, Although having said that, I've just realized that the FAT system, FAT file system is used on some USB sticks. So that, that could be the reason why this is still a valid, valid uh, package to have. Um, but apart from that, there would be no need to have this. Uh, so let's go back to our kernel tab. And we need to go back now to the file systems uh, menu. So it's back exit to the top menu down one to the file systems menu and then we need to look for the option where it says dos fat nt file systems so we just scroll down here and there it is there dos fat nt file systems so just press enter and we've already got ms dos and vfat built in by the if you remember in linux from scratch we created a kernel with defaults for the hardware that we're using so it's automatically uh, built these two uh, file system support in so you can change them to modules if you wish but I'm just going to leave them as they are as long as they're checked in one way or another it doesn't matter so let's go back to the source and build the package so we've got one switch down here which is just an explanation it's saying it will create some extra sim links so we can copy the configure and the make as it is and we can install it and that's done so now we're on to something called BTRFS, I believe it's pronounced ButterFS, I think there are some other pronunciations but I think Butter sounds unusual. So uh, let's see what this needs, this needs something called LZO, I can't remember if we've installed that or not now. Yes we have, ASCII doc, don't think we've got that one, no. And XMLTO we have, yep. And then there's a couple of uh, optional packages there. One's used for tests, and the reset FS progs is used for tests. So let's do this ASCII doc, which just requires Python, which we've got. So let's grab this. Okay, so there's nothing fancy with this. We just copy and paste the commands that the BLFS team have given us in the book. Well, that was nice and quick. So let's install it. All right, that must be a really tiny package. That was very, very quick. So we're done with that one. And now we can go back to ButterFS, so let's download it and extract. So BTRFS is like the open source equivalent of ZFS because ZFS has got some license issues, it means it can't be built into the kernel, it has to be built as a separate module. So it's kind of not as easy to build as BTRFS. Um, I'm still not sure whether BTRFS is good for like Showtime. I think there's one or two distributions, maybe more than one or two, that are using it as a default file system. 
um, but I certainly wouldn't be using it for a production system at the moment while there's still that doubt about it um, until more distributions are using it. ZFS has been around for, I can't remember how long now, probably at least 10 years. So it's tried and tested. It's, it's, um, would be my choice. I've, I've not used uh, ButterFS at all. Um, because of that reason, because it's still in my eyes a, a little bit new. It probably is fine to use maybe for, you know, personal use or testing, but I certainly wouldn't use it for a production system at the moment. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong there. If, <laughs> if I get any comments to the contrary on that, I'm, I'm quite open-minded. I'll accept that I'm, I'm wrong. But uh, at the moment, I, I don't see any reason personally to use it. Uh, so let's uh, change into that. And we've got some kernel configurations to do. One option just to enable in the file system. So let's go back to the kernel, exit this DOS menu. And I think the BTRFS is at the top somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's just about two thirds of the way down the first page. So we can enable it as a module or a an inbuilt. I say I don't use it, so I'm going to build it as a module. And like the XFS, we've got other options within that to enable, which I'm not going to set. Uh, so we've got a notice saying config BTRFS FS POSIX ACL, which is probably the one we're on at the moment. To find that out, you can do help. And always at the top of the help is the actual config name. So in, in the config file, you can see here, there's the name of the config file we're editing. This is the name of the configuration option that's set uh, for this particular menu option. So you can see this is what they're talking about, this particular one. And config reset fs x attr are required for some tests. Other btrfs options in the kernel are option optional so we're not running the test so it doesn't matter anyway as long as we've got this either built in or set as a module this option here so let's go back to the source and build it so I've got configure with a few options let's see if they've got anything else disable documentation it's needed if the recommended dependencies are not installed so recommended, we've got both of them, so that's okay. They are recommended, so they would be installed by us. And that's it. So we can copy and paste the configure command, configure command as it is to build that. Okay, so it's built. So the next bit's about uh, creating the test programs and then running the tests. So we jump down to this last box, installing the package as a root user. And that's done. So that's built. We can get rid of that one. So now we've got lib block dev. So it requires object introspection. We've got lib byte size we haven't got, parted we haven't got, volume key we haven't got, and yaml we haven't got. And there's some optional ones there, two of which we've already installed. So let's go to the end of this list. And yaml is the first one. Just got a dependency on. Uh, optional dependency for doxygen so let's copy this one so straightforward to configure and make and now we can do 
make install and tidy up next one volume key so this requires something called crypt setup I don't think we have that no glib we have gpgme we haven't got I don't think gpg was in lowercase no nss we have swig we haven't got okay so let's jump to swig that needs pcre which we have got yeah we've got pcre and pcre2 optional boost for the test we're not testing so that's by the by so we can download this Source force seems to be quite slow this morning. All well, this afternoon, I even just realise it's gone midday here. Okay, so let's extract swig. And we can start building. So some sets to fix using was Perl 5.26. And we've got some configure commands. Without maximum compile warnings, that's just an explanation. And without language, no disabling the building of test examples for language. But all the language capabilities for Swig are always built. So again, that's just purely for testing. So we'll ignore that. We'll just copy the configure and make and begin the build. Right, so that's okay, we can install and that's complete. Get rid of that one, GPGME requires lib asuan and optional right now it says here that GNU PG is required if QT or Swig are installed but used during the test suite um, let me just check my notes because I'm pretty sure that is something that had to be installed Uh, yeah, I've got a note here saying that yeah, GNU PG must be installed before GPGME. So, although we're not running the test suite, it seems the fact that we've got QT well, and Swig, we've got at least one of those two, it does need to be installed. Okay, so GNU PG. So that needs LibAsuan as well. So let's move that tab to there. Um, LibGcrypt. Not sure if we've got that. Here we have LibGPG error. Right, we've got that one. Lib K S B A we definitely haven't got. Don't recognise that one. 
and MPTH we haven't got pin entry we haven't got um, and then there's some optional ones there so let's move this a little bit around back to where it should be so pin entry right okay so that needs Libassuan so let's move it back again and it also needs libgpg error which we already had I think didn't we yep and then there's some options which we've got most of so it looks like libassuan is the one that's holding everything back that just needs libgpg error So let's get this. As you can see, we're building up a big hierarchy of dependencies again. Oh, I didn't want to do that. But it's just the way things happen. So configure and make, there's no extra configure options mentioned, so let's build it. That's built, so here is maybe where we could have installed text live earlier on, because we're now missing out on documentation in these formats, document PDF and PS formats, but as I say, documentation is not particularly important in this in this case. If it is to you, if you want to learn about these things while you're building this, then you may want to jump um, to the video where I do actually build text live. It's probably going to be one of the later ones, I imagine. Uh, so it's not particularly an important one as far as I'm concerned. So we'll skip that and we'll just go straight to building, uh, sorry, installing the package. And that's done. These rest, rest of these are just for building uh, documentation. So let's get rid of that and that one. So pin entry can be built now. So we've got some extra options here. Enable inside Emacs, yes or no. Default is no, we haven't got Emacs installed. Enable pin entry QT, default is yes anyway, we've got QT. Enable pin entry GTK2, yes or no. Default is yes, even if other pin entry is installed, pin entry will be a sim link to pin entry GTK2. And enable pin entry for GNOME 3. Default is yes, actually it's a GTK3 pin entry. And then enable pin entry TTY, which is one of the options. Default is maybe. So I think we can take the defaults or the default configuration commanders they've got. Okay, and we can install that now. So NPTH, no dependencies, let's copy it, extract, and then a basic configure and install. Okay, that's that one done. Libksba. So 
that needs lib gpg error and I think that was already installed here yeah. so let's just fetch it and extract it Again, a basic configure and make and install. And that's done. So now we're on to GNU GPG and we should have all of these dependencies met now, so that's okay. Big warning here, if you're upgrading from GNU, GP, GNU PG prior to version 2.1, upstream developers recommend backing up, da, 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 da. So we're not upgrading, so we can ignore that. So let's download it. Okay, um, so if the top directory path of the sources unpacked contains symbolic links, open GP, open GP test may fail. If this is the case, you wish to run a test suite, fix that with this set command. So we're not doing tests, we can ignore that. So install GNU PG by running the following commands. Let's just double check if there's any other configure commands we might be interested in. So the first one is the default doctor simcrypt run so they've enabled that enable all tests we're not interested in that and enable G13 allows building of the G13 program whatever that does so we could add that in if we wanted to in case that's useful for something so let's install that as well So you can see that G13 has been enabled and we've got everything else enabled apart from LDAP because there's no need for that on a personal system. So we can now make it with the remaining commands. Right, so that's built, not sure what that's about, 2002, I'm sure the date would be right, yeah it is, so uh, that's a bit strange. Um, so we haven't got text live installed, so we can't build the extra documentation, not a problem, so um, not testing. If you've already installed GNU PG, the instructions below will overwrite uh, the main file by the looks of it. Now as the root user we can install it, so sudo 
minus C plus U. Go and paste that in. It's done. If you create an alternate format to the documentation, install it using the following commands as the root user. Well, we didn't create those, so we can ignore that. So we're done with this package. So that's GNU PG done. Get rid of that, and we're on to GPGME. So copy the link and paste. Let's expand it. So there's just an explanation for the one switch that's been added to the usual. And in fact, it's all about test programs. So we'll just stick that in there anyway. Right, that's done, so we can install it. And tidy up. So now we're on to crypt setup. And this has got some dependencies. We've got JSON C, Libgy Crypt, Libgy Crypt. Let's check that one, we've got that one. LVM2, I don't think we have that one. No. LibPW quality we haven't got yet. And we've got some kernel configuration. Right, so let's go and deal with these dependencies. So Cracklib we've got. And Pam we've got. And Python we've got. So We can get on with this, download that one, and extract it. So you can see there's just one switch that's explaining that um, it's given the location of Python. Uh, for the Python 3 binary, the default is Python, which is Python 2. So we'll just take that as it is. And install it. Okay, so we need to do sudo to get rid of everything. So LVM2 needs lib AIO and a few optional packages 
NipIIO hasn't got any dependencies, so let's build that. Oh, I see. I'm getting confused by the fact that downloads an underscore after libaio and what's been extracted is a hyphen. Okay. So, I said to disable the installation of the static library. And then we can make it. And then install it. Again, so hyphen. So LVM2 has got its dependencies satisfied, so we can fetch the source. So this needs some kernel configuration as well. So let's go to the tab we've got with the kernel in and we need to be in device drivers this time so let's exit this part go up one to device drivers and in then back to the multiple device driver support option we were in before when we were configuring the raid options for MDA, MDADM let's press enter and we need device mapper support enabled here oops wrong window again so it's already built in, so that's good. And we need to check crypt target support, which I'm not aware that I have used LVM before, so I'm just going to add these as modules. Snapshot target, I'll add that in. Thin provisioning target, add that in as a module as well. Avoid the experimental options. We're looking for something called mirror target which is already built in so I'm just going to leave that as it is then we've got go to kernel hacking which is off the main menu so let's exit this one and then exit again down the bottom kernel hacking and magic sys re request key is already set as well so that's fine so let's go back to our source tab extract the package capitals this time and install it so we've got a configure here let's see if there's any other options so we've got enable command lib that's there enable package config and udev sync package config they're explained udev sync enable dm event d this switch enables the building of the device Mapper event daemon. So that's not added in by default, is it? So we may want to add that in as well. Let's see if we can do that. That may be useful for, I don't know, issuing emails that events have happened, for example. As so I've never used LVM, I'm not, I've kind of got an idea what it does, but I don't know what it does exactly or how to use it. So, uh, let's... warning: support for thin provisioning is limited since some thin provisioning tools are missing. Okay, they may be the options, possibly. Yeah, that's one of the options here, and it's off the BLFS manual, so I won't be installing that. It's saying the same thing about the cache as well. So I don't know if that's part of the thin provisioning tools or... Well, the only two we haven't got installed are the Razor FS proc and Valgrin, so I'm not sure how you'd resolve that. If it's something you use or you're interested in using, then it's something you can investigate yourself. So let's make this.
Okay, so the next bit says the tests. Uh, if you're installing it for the first time and do not want to install the full package for running the test, minimal set of utilities can be installed by running the following instructions as the root user. So we're not testing, we'll skip that. Skip this is all about the tests as well. Some tests may hang. The checks create device nodes in the temp directory, so we ignore that. So we just go straight for a, a standard make install to install the package. And that's successful. So Jason C that hasn't got any dependencies. So just a fairly straightforward config and make. and install it and we're done so crypt setup right so we've been satisfying dependencies required by crypt setup they look like they're complete now so we can fetch it this is quite a big package don't take too long to build and extract it. Right, so we've got some more configuration to do in the kernel. So let's go back to the top and we need to go into the device drivers menu again and then locate the multiple device drivers mint submenu, which is down there. And this time we need to enable device mapper support, which we've already got, I think, previously. We had to enable that. And crypt target support, which is already set as a module. Oh, yeah, I think this was for the LVM we had to set these two up, wasn't it? So they're already configured, so that's good. So now we go back to the top and we go into the crypt graphic API. And we need to look for something called XTS support here and enable that. So let's go down. There it is there. I'm not aware of what this is. I'm just going to install this as a module. You can see that by setting that as a module, if I would clear it, it's automatically changed the ECB support just above from being built in a mandatory built-in as well, we can't alter that but by changing this to a module it says oh I need ECP, ECB support as a module which is what the uh, curly brackets mean that's been forced uh, so we now need to look for SHA-224 and SHA-256 digest algorithm so let's look further down so that's already been forced built in so we don't need to do anything there next one we've got is AES cipher algorithms and cipher algorithms for 64-bit x86 platform so let's look for that A AES cipher algorithms already set and the cipher algorithms for x86-64 needs to be set so again I'm just going to set that as a module next one we've got is user space interface for symmetric key cipher algorithms so just go down and look for that carefully there we go user space interface for symmetric key cipher algorithms it's that one there like I say if you want to double check that the the name of the actual config item you can go to on the right window go to help and that name there is the unique name within the config file which should match this one here which is crypto user api sk cipher and that is the same one so that's correct so i'll set that as a module 
as well. And then it says for two tests it needs this two fish cipher algorithm. Well, why not just set it anyway? Even even if uh, uh, we don't need it because we're not testing, we don't know if the actual tool might might need to use it. So they're just at the top here. So I'll set that as an M. So we'll leave that, we'll go back to the source and start building it. So it's just one command explanation for saying stating that back end is gonna have open SSL as the cryptographic back end, so we can just use that. So that's done, we can install and tidy up. That isn't it script. And the configure it says beyond uh, number of uh, possible configurations beyond the scope of the BLFS book. So there's a fact for that. So volume key, we've now satisfied the dependencies, dependencies for this, so we can install it. Okay, so this one, the file name has changed a bit, yep. Yeah, it's actually a note there saying that the package expands to a directory name that's different from the tar name, which is what caught me out. So we've got explanations here without Python prevents from building Python 2 bindings if Python 2 is installed and without Python 3 if you do not want the Python 3 bindings. In this case, Swig is not needed. So I'm just going to take the default what's been given in the book. Okay, so we can install that with make install and tidy up. So now we need to install parted. So optional, can't I think we installed PTH, did we? Who notes? optional. Perhaps we didn't. I thought we may have had it queued. No, maybe not. No, for some reason I thought it was required because I seem to remember um, Installing it when I've I was testing this note. Okay, uh, let me just see what it does. Oh, it's a threading library. Um, I think I'm going to install it because I, I think it may be needed elsewhere. Um, and it's a small package again as well anyway so let's um, let's do it so do not able do do not add the enable pthread parameters of config command below else you'll overwrite the pthread library and interface header installed by glibc package in LFS so that would be quite serious if you did that 
and it's not mentioned down here, so I presume it's warning you that about that in case you were examining the configure commands to see what other options you might want to enable if you were fine tuning the package itself. Okay, we're not running tests, so we'll install it. Tidy up. So now we'll build Parted. Optional to build to fix build without device map of support. Well, I'll download that patch in case we decide to rebuild this package at some time and we've disabled device mapper but that was one of the options that we enabled in the kernel so let's extract this so we'll ignore the patch and just oh, let's see if there's any config commands Disabled device mapper. Yeah, if you've not installed LVM2, so we have. So let's keep that functionality. The disabled device mapper is not in the configure in the example, so we'll just copy everything as it is. Okay, that's done. We haven't got text live installed, so we'll skip that. Test suite will skip, so we just go straight to the installation. And we'll skip the installation of the documentation because we haven't built it. So that's done. We can tidy up. that down so lib byte size needs PCRE we've got that a few options we haven't got that module installed I think we might need it later I'm not sure now but it says it's only needed for test and Python bindings so we can ignore that so extract and configure and install you can put in without python uh, to prevent use of python 2 but it may be required to run the test if some of the needed python modules are installed for python 3 only well we're installing for python 2 and 3 where available and it does say it's only for tests so we can just ignore that switch And now make install. And that's done. So now lib block dev. So you can see that the angle we did quite a while ago. Uh, all these dependencies had loads more dependencies themselves, so it's all come together now. So we can now build this. So 
So um, there's no options, or no, sorry, uh, explanations for the configure commands. We'll just use them as they are. and install it. And tidy up. So lib ATA smart doesn't have any dependencies. So, fairly straightforward build commands. So, just copy and paste them in. And we can install it and tidy up. So UDISC again as another one that had quite a few dependencies we can uh, go ahead and download and build this one now. But once again you can see how apparently one simple file which is the, uh, sorry one simple package which is this Thunav Volman that we're trying to install, how uh, you get these blockers spawning. Uh, you think you're getting to the end of the dependency tree and you find all of a sudden another little branch has uh, got requirements for a whole host of uh, packages. So configure just got disable static and the gtk dot command so once again we can just copy and paste. And now we can do um, an install. And that's complete. So libcdio needs libcddb. And let's see DDB can be built on its own. So straightforward commands again. Install it and tidy up. Now we can install libcdio. So let's straightforward configure and make. And 
to install it. Right, did I not? Yeah, I forgot to download the required file, so let's get that. Move it into the LFS directory and then we can carry on installing the CDIO paranoia. Okay, and then once again we can install and tidy up. So that's complete. So the next one we've got is GCR. So this, I think we've got all these. Uh, we've certainly got glib, libgcrypt we've got, yeah, libtas and I think we've got and P11 kit, or so we've got that, yep. Recommended, we've got new new PG, you can see that's, we've just done that recently. Object introspection, we've got, we've got GTK3, we've got XSLT and Vala. So we can go ahead with that one. So there's some explanations here without GTK. If you use a switch if you install GTK3, but you won't get a certain program, GCR viewer. And then I'm all about the documentation, so we'll just take what's there again. Okay, so let's install that. And tidy up. So libsoup next, glib networking. Don't think we've got that. And the PSL we haven't got. XML2 I think we've got. Oh, maybe not. I thought we did have this. Alright, okay. I didn't find that. Still, it's there anyway. Um, so it's just these two. Lib IDN with PSL needs Lib IDN. So we haven't got that one. And that li needs Lib Uni string, which I'm not sure if we've got. Oops. Let's lib uni. Yeah, we have optional git and gtk doc, so they're optional, we'll ignore them. We'll grab the package.
So straightforward configure and make. Okay, so uh, now we can install that and tidy up. And now we can build PSL. So there's no other config explanations, so we just copy and paste again. And install it. So Glib networking got glib, got no TLS I think, let's check these, so glib we've got no TLS, we've got, so G settings, desktop schemas we haven't got, recommended make CMP with one kit, we've got those two, so it's just this one here. Needs glib and object introspection. We've got both of those, so we're okay. Okay, so just the set and configure and make. and install the note there just about if you're using the um, desktop method to install which we're not so we can ignore that just tidy up so glib networking Just a copy and paste again of the configure and build. And install it as the root. That's done. So next one, libsoup. We've now satisfied these dependencies. So let's copy it. Uh, sorry, fetch it. Copy the link, fetch it. So if we've got extra options here, got some explanations. The VAPI uses if you're not installed Valor so set that to false so they've set it to true so we'll leave that as it is doc equals true uses option if you want to build documentation but you must have GTK doc installed which you have so we can add that it doesn't mention anything about API documentation and the GSS API equals false defaults building GSS API support which requires Kerberos as does a test suite. If you're building GNOME or have Kerberos installed, remove this option. 
So we're not building gnome. We don't have Kerberos, so we need to leave that in. So let's copy those commands there. Let's add this doc equals true to build some extra documentation. And don't forget the two dots to show that the build, the source directory is in the parent directory. It looks like there's loads of other HTTP dependencies. There was, uh, yeah, Apache is one of the optional packages. It says it's required to run the test suite. So that's why we've got all those nodes there. In fact, that's all that lot that looks of it. So that's a successful build for us. Oh, sorry, the successful configuration. We can now build it with Ninja. Okay, and we can now install So that's all built, installed, Let's tidy up. So libsecret requires glib, which we've got introspection, we've got libgcrypt, we've got valor, we've got. So we can just go straight ahead with that one. Right, there's a runtime dependency here, so we should actually go and fetch that. Oops, well done. Uh, so let's install that one. Oh, I've just bookmarked libsecret for some reason. Just remove it. You see it there. Never mind, it looks like it's been bookmarked. It's got a little green tab next to it. Uh, so, GNOME keyring. So, let's get back. Remove lib secret so we know we've got to extract it and it'll be fresh. We know it's fresh. Let's get GNOME keyring. So we've got the bus, GCR, we've got all of these recommended packages. So let's just, yeah, they're just explanations. We can just copy and paste this.
Okay, so that's done. Let's install it. And that's all completed. Right, so we can go back to libsecret now. So let's extract it again. And so the reason why I remove the source is in case it takes a while that that uh, key ring may have had more dependencies and it could have been quite a while that we were away from building libsecret and I could have come back and not known what state the directory was in. So just by deleting it, I know that I've got to extract it and I know the directory is fresh and there's nothing tainted about it. So that is what this note's about, saying that the uh, this package expects uh, name keyring to be present at runtime. So it was quite important that we installed that. So we've got some extra options for the extra options for the configure. So we could add that one in. Let's start doing these. GTK doc. Oh, sorry, this is for the API documentation, so I won't bother with that. I won't disable the main pages. Yeah, use this switch if you've not installed XSLT and the docbook packages. And disable gcrypt if you've not installed the recommended dependency of libgcrypt. So we can actually take the uh, config command as it is. And just run make. And we can now do make install. That's done. And now we're on to GVFS. All these dependencies are now resolved, so we can fetch that and begin installing it. So there's a few options there. So it's saying the false ones, just switching those off basically. They're required if corresponding or optional dependencies not installed. Remove those that you have installed the corresponding application and wish to use it with GVFS. So these two are about disabling a dependency on system D and login D. And the switch is required. This CDDA equals false if LibCDIO is not installed. Uh, I think we've installed that, you know. Let's check. Is it LibCDIO? Yep. So it's not in Lib. Let's see if it's in user Lib. Yeah. It is, so we've got that installed, so we don't need that switch. And we have got a virtual CD drive. So let's just have a quick look at these. We haven't got Fuse, we haven't got GPhoto 2, don't recognise that. We haven't got Blu-ray, NFS we're not installing, MTP no, SMB no. Yep, I think we can take that as it is. So let's just copy and paste all of that. Okay, so we can install and that's complete. Let's just check there's no configuration. There's a note here about the fact again if you're using the tester installation method, which we're not, so we're done with this package now. 
So finally we're back to Thunar Volmen after probably an hour or so of installing other packages. <clears throat> so uh, let's go back into XFCE. And looks like we haven't installed it yet, so let's fetch it. And extract it. And ironically, this has got one of the simplest configure and make commands we've uh, encountered. After all those dependencies we had, we had to install. And we can now install that package. So that's done. So now it's got something called Tumblr. What's this? Dbus thumbnailing service. Useful for generating thumbnail images of files. So it's only got one requirement of glib and there's a few optional packages there, most of which we've got. So we'll just go and get this. Again, fairly simple, configure and make. Okay, that's done, so let's install. And clean up. So next we've got something called XFC for App Finder. Two requirements we've got. So we can just go and fetch it. Again, simple configure make. and install now a power manager lib notify looks like we've installed u power looks like we haven't installed no so we need to get hold of that one So there's dbus glib, libgu dev, libusb poll kit, we've got those. These are all optional, so we can go back up to the blfs directory and fetch upower. So, uh, some explanations here, enabled deprecated, needed by some applications, so they've included that. And then these two usual suspects, so we shall just copy and paste that. Install. Okay, that's done. So now we can go back to the XFC directory, XFCE, and 
fetch this power management package. Again, it's a uh, pretty straightforward config and build. So we can install it now. Tidy up. Next one we've got is XFC for settings. So it looks like we've got all the required and all the recommended packages there. There's an optional lib input which won't do because it's optional. So let's just grab hold of it. Okay, so we've got some additional commands for configure here, including one to enable sound settings, which may be useful. As I said uh, on the previous video, the sound is not particularly important to me. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But obviously, if it was a real system, it probably would be important to you. Enable pluggable dialogues. Use a switch to enable support for embedded settings dialogues. That sounds quite nifty. So we'll have that as well. Okay, so it says it's not found the lib input, which was one of the optional settings. Um, yeah, I'd like to see that there, but it's kind of not really that important, and I'm not sure if lib input is required by anything else, I can't remember off the top of my head, so I think I'll just leave it as it is, just go for the make. Okay, and install it. Okay, now we're doing XF desktop. So startup notification, I think we've got that one. Yep. So we're all good to go on this one. So again, a nice, simple configure and make command. And install. So now I've got the XF window manager for XFCE. So we've got the required dependencies, we've got the recommended. Um, so we can go ahead and fetch and build this package. Once again, I 
a simple command. Now install it. So now we've got building an XFC for session. So the requirements we have desktop file utils. Uh, let's check that. No, we haven't got that one. We haven't got shared MIME info, and we've got the runtime requirement of XF Desktop. So let's go and fetch these two packages. So for shared MIME info, we have the two requirements. Let's go back to the BLFS directory to do these packages. see that, that oh we have installed it because I've just downloaded it again see it's got the dot one in to show that I've downloaded the same package name twice so let's tidy this up go to the directory and get rid of the extra package obviously mistyped something when I was searching for it so we can not bother with that one Let's just double check this desktop one. No, it's not there. So this needs glib optional Emacs. So we haven't got Emacs installed. Let's fetch this one. And again, this is a nice simple installation. Check the configuration. Let's do this before we remove the directory. Right, so it's basically saying that uh, GNOME KD and XFC, which is what we're building, respect these settings for locations of the configuration files for desktop file utils. And it says when a package installs a desktop file to a location, one of the base data directories, the database that maps MIME types to available locations can be updated. For instance, the cache file at this location can be rebuilt by executing the following command as the root user. So we could run this now in case there's anything that needs to be updated. Uh, of any packages we've already installed. So that's that complete. Okay, so let's remove that and we can now install the XFC session. So copy link, let's go back to XFCE and fetch it. So there's just one explanation for an existing switch in the example. So we can just copy that. Install that now. So 
So it says there are several optional runtime dependencies for XFC for Console Kit 2, which we have Dbus, we have GNU PG, we have High Colors Icon Theme, we have an OpenSSH. So we're all good there. When building an XFC or XFC4 package, some configuration files are installed in user share applications, user share icons, and user share MIME. In order to use those files in your XFC4 session, you need to update various databases. So we can do that with these two commands running them as root. So let's do that now. That seems to have worked. Now we starting S <coughs> starting XFC4, you can start from run level 3 using Xinit or run level 5 using display managers such as like DM. So we're using LXDM. So if you want to use it using the Xinit method, there's a command you need to put into your X in the RC again that could be the system wide one um, and it explains how it starts as well if you use the start X method where it puts this session and there's a note there about if you drop console kill debus launch so if you just use start XFC in X in it you'll lose the capabilities if you don't uh, use this CK launch session and the debus launch so that's what that's saying about and it's just saying about uh, where shutdown messages appear and how you can view them so I'm going to carry on using the um, desktop manager um, purely because that's how most distros use is uh, how most distros work and it's nicer I think to have a nice graphical login rather than a command line prompt so next we've got some XFC applications so let's come out of this and tidy up So you may not want all of these, but we'll just go through them all anyway, being they're part of the XFC uh, installation. So this is a DVD CD stroke music player for XFC that uses GStreamer. So we've got some dependencies here. Uh, GST plugins base. Let's have a look at the directory above yeah we've got that one I don't think we've got the plugins good no we need that one and we haven't got tag lib so let's go back up and deal with these ones see make we've got so we can just fetch this So we can just copy and paste these commands to install this. And we can install now. And that's done. GST plugins good. Needs plugin base. Right, so recommended. I think we've got a lot of these. So we've got Cairo, we've got Flack. Lame, we haven't got MPEG123, we haven't got Misa, we have GDK Pix Buff, I think we have LibG Dev, we have JPEG Turbo, PNG, Soup, VPX, I think we have, yep, 
and the XORB libraries and then there's a load of further optional packages again many of which we've already got installed <coughs> so let's deal with these also lib we have uh, there's a few optional ones there so let's go for an install of this mpeg one two three So a nice simple command. And install it. And done. So now we've got lame, it's got a few optional files but no required dependencies. So uh, we've got some explanations and we've got an additional switch here we can add in to use NASM to build some optimized assembly routines so that sounds like quite a good idea so let's take advantage of that and build it and now we can install So GST plugin's good. Let's fetch the two files here, the package and the patch. So again, it says, I think it said this before, for one of the GST uh, plugins we, uh, GST packages we compiled that if you need a plugin for a given dependency that dependency needs to be installed before this application so if you're aware of anything like that then you need to uh, do that install that application first GST plugins good Okay, so we'll do the patch and auto reconfigure. And now we can configure and build it.
Right, looks like we've got an error for some reason with Wayland Cursor Library missing. I don't know why that would be. Um, didn't get this error when I was testing this, so let's just double check some of the um, dependencies. So Wayland is an optional. Library opt QT5 was moved. I don't quite know what that means. <clears throat> Good argument. Um, let's see if we get the same error again if I rerun make. Yeah, it's failing again. So what I might do is, I think I'll restart the machine. Um, in fact, what I'll do before that is, uh, let's remove this. GST plugins. Good, just tidy that up. Um, go to the kernel and let's build this before we do anything else. Because I think I think the best thing to do is to reboot the machine in case there's any libraries that need loading or some configuration has been uh, did I actually save that? I did, didn't I? Configuration written let me just check I did uh, file systems yeah, that looks good yeah, that's all there that's okay so I'm just going to I'm going to go for J number of jobs 8 because I was watching the kernel configuration the other day and on 4 jobs there was one period where it was only seemed to be running on 1 or 2 cores so I think it would be safe to go for J8 as you can see it's running now and it's uh, not loading up completely so yeah that looks a bit better now we've got some nice big bars going across at the top there That's complete, so uh, let's see if the, oh let's make the modules, install them, things especially as we've got a load more to install, yep, they're okay, so let's see if this big copy command, yeah it's still here, so that's good, and the history, I was worried that the history might have uh, dropped it off, there's only so many commands, I think it's 500 default, that are retained. It brings me typing in a lot of commands. I thought it might have disappeared, but it is there and it looks all correct. So, okay, so if we come out of this window and that one. So, uh, CMonkey will save these tabs to remind us that we need to do GST plugins good when we uh, boot up again. So I'll just do Control Q to quit that. 
Q there and Control D and then we'll log out of this one and I'll do a I'll do a shutdown to be sure I think Okay, so we'll start that off again. Okay, and the screen's gone back again because I shut the machine down. So let's um, let's log in and log out again. That's better, let's reset it so we can go in again. So let's begin by getting Seamonkey up again. And then next term. First of all, I'll sp spawn the LX terminal in the background. So that's fine, and now I'll run top in this one again. And just make that a little bit bigger. Right, that hasn't retained the font size, so let's zoom that in. Let's put that back to 80 columns, but increase it a little bit more. One more might be too much. I don't know, that fits the screen quite well. Yeah, that's probably how it was before. So let's try and reinstall this GStream of good plugins. Um, as I say, when I tested this, I didn't get these failures, so there's obviously something a little bit different I've done this time. It's affected it. Uh, GST plugins good. Oh, did I apply the patch? I must have done. Uh, right, let me just resize the height of this. Obviously gone off the screen. I'll stretch it down too far before I've resized the font. That's better. Right, so let's have another go. Plugins good. Just double check, we've checked all these. Required is there. These are recommended and they're all there. Recognise all of them. So, yeah, we did do a patch because there's this reconf. Let's do a command at a time and check there's not any errors. There shouldn't be because the auto reconf worked and we've got the double amp sound, which means if the previous command executed, then do this current command. Right, that was okay. Let's do the configure by itself just to check the output at the end. But again, the make wouldn't have run if this had failed at any point. So, plug. Oh, there's quite a few here. Right, so. Plugins without external dependencies will be built. So these are all um, plugins that are being built from the source that is part of the GST plugins good. 
plugins without external dependencies will not be built. One called Monoscope. Plugins have not been ported, there's none. Plugins with dependencies will be built, so we've, this means we've got the libraries for all of these plugins. And I think you'll probably recognize some of them, the packages that we've built. Then we've got plugins with dependencies that will not be built. So I think some of these were optional dependencies. For example, Jack is an external link. That's there, so we won't be building that. Too lame, another one. Wave pack and so on. And then awk acceleration disable requires awk, which was not found. Slow code pass will be used. So I'm not sure where that was. Was that at the top, was it? Can't see it's been listed at all, actually, anywhere. So let's type make. Um, just wondering if it's worth running make with one job. There's no uh, suggestion that we'd need to. Um, let's try it with a J1 just to. No, let's try it without again just to see if the reboot has worked. And of course, remember while this is building, just remember that we've rebooted um, a new kernel, although the kernel changes we made were to do with file systems, so I don't think that would have had an effect at all on, on this error. So it looks like it was about this point that it failed. Yeah, it's failed again. So I cannot find library Wayland cursor.so. Um, I'm actually tempted to look at the Wayland, I wonder if that needs to be reinstalled for some reason. Let's get that one up and see, does that have a Wayland cursor? It does. So I wondered if there's something that's maybe gone a bit funny. Maybe we've installed one of these packages after we've installed Wayland and that's now caused the problem. Um can't see why else it's be failing. So let's get rid of this directory. The source directory. Oh, good. And expand the Wayland one one six tar file again and cd into it. and rebuild this. So there's no fancy um, configure commands apart from leaving out the disabled documentation if we wanted the API which we don't so let's do this once at a time actually. 
make sure this installs correctly. Again, it wouldn't have built if the configure had failed. And obviously when Mike's done, we'll just have a quick cursory check to see if there's any errors at the end of Mike to see why it failed, or, or, or sorry, or if it failed. So you can see there's no errors. The config status is normally the last part of the config. So that looks okay. So now there's no errors there at all. It's worked fine. So let's uh, install that again. So that's fine. Let's remove that. Get rid of that tab and go back to the GST plugins again. So extract it once more. So run the patch and re auto reconf. Happy there was no errors last time, so there's not going to be any this time. When we're configuring, it's just the make that's failing. And it was explicitly saying it couldn't find one of the Wayland libraries, so maybe we should have just gone straight for reinstalling Wayland in the first place. So once again, there's no other config commands, we'll just configure and make, and hopefully it will find the library. In fact, perhaps we should have checked that it was actually there. It would have been a good idea after we reinstalled it, but we can see what happens this time round. Right, it's still failing with the same error, so really don't know why that is. I don't know what this means either. The library was moved. I guess we can just quickly check that they exist. Ah, oh, now I've just realised the these are .la files. I wonder if the um, that file that script that was created at the beginning of the BLFS book 
to remove these LF files might fix this problem. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look. Security 5. Lib. Yeah, there's quite a few there, so I wonder if that's something we need to run. Um, now I can't remember what it was called. Let's um, go back to the beginning of the book. There we go, about the tool archive shared uh, LA files. So the problem is that libtool usually creates one or more text files for package libraries called libtool archives. These small files have, an, have a .la extension and contain information that is similar to, the embedded, similar to that embedded in the libraries. When building a package that uses libtool, the process automatically looks for these files. If a package is updated and no longer uses the .la file, then the build process can break. The solution is to remove the .la files. However, there's a catch. Some packages, such as ImageMagic, use lib tool function ltdlo DL open to load libraries as needed during execution and resolve the, their dependencies at runtime. In this case the .la file should remain. So this sounds like this could be the solution. So let's run this as the root to the looks of it. Uh, where is it? User bin. User bin. Right, it's not tabbing it because I'm not actually the user, so let's become the user to make it easy for us. So remove, yeah. So let's run that. Yeah, there's loads there. All the software that we've been we've been installing, and you can see a lot of them are these Qt5 ones. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Start again. Good. Mm. Okay, let's go round and round again. And hopefully that was the problem. Right, well, that seems to have compiled a lot quicker. Yeah, I can't believe how quick that was. It seems to have done a lot less. So those LA files were obviously making quite a difference. I'm just going to run make on its own just to make sure that everything is built. Yeah, so they've made quite a bit of difference. Hopefully they've not affected anything else by having those LA files there. So, just goes to show you. <laughs> and it wasn't obvious initially what was wrong. The last error was saying it was uh, missing a Wayland file, and yet it was also mentioned in QT files, although there were the first issues. The actual error appeared against the Wayland file, saying it couldn't actually find the library. So, you've kind of got to read between lines with these errors sometimes and use your best judgement to try and work out why things are failing. So, well, it's a, in a way that's a good example of how to try and fix problems. They will occur, I'm sure they will occur. Uh, it's just a matter of, sort of say, keeping keeping clear head and using, using your best judgement to resolve these problems. So this is installing now. Uh, 
and that's all worked so we can clear that up and carry on with parole so I'm going to go back to the XFC directory then so that when I fetch this it's placed in that directory So it's a nice simple configuration to make. Oh, we've got one explanation here. Use this switch. Okay, so it's just saying if a, like an older version of GStreamer is installed, so we haven't got that. Sorry, not an older version of GStreamer. It's an old version of uh, some GStreamer 0 packages are installed at the same time as G, GStreamer 1.14, which I believe is the one we've got. Okay, so we can install that now. And clear up. So the next one we've got a terminal emulation program for XFCE. Um, and as you can see that needs the VTE terminal emulator which we've already installed. Oh no, sorry, I beg your pardon, this looks like the other version. This was one of the packages uh, where there's two different versions in the BLFS book. Um, let's just verify that. Uh, uh, do. So VTE star yeah, so we've installed VTE 0.28.2, which was part of the LXDE, but this is VTE 0.54, and this is just part of the GNOME libraries and utilities. So we need to fetch this. Uh, check the dependencies. We've got these three, we've got those two, so that's fine. So let's come out of the XFCE to get this different version of VTE. Again, it seems like the internet's pausing for a while, so just wait a while for that. There it goes. So let's expand this. Now we've got a couple of uh, extra command or explanation for commands. It says enable introspection is a switch that's been added to remove it if we don't have object introspection. So we have, we'll leave it without GNU TLS can be added if we haven't got GNU TLS in but we have so we'll just take the configure and make as they are Right, we can install that now. And that's complete. So now we go back to XFC directory and fetch this package. And 
a simple configure and make. And we can install that package and that's done. So now XF burn is a CD burner. So we need libburn, we certainly haven't got libisofs, we probably haven't got. No, so we need those two. GST plugins base, we should have because we've just installed the plugins good which needed the base but let's check so yep there it is and CDR DAO no we need that one for runtime okay so let's come out of the XFCE directory again because these are standard libraries and we've got some recommendations here. So libao, we haven't got, that's libaio we've already installed, but this is libao, subtle difference there, quite easy to miss as well. libvorbis we've got, libmad, let's try that one, no we haven't got that one. And lame we've got, so let's go to libmad. Looks like that's got no dependencies, so let's start with that one. And a patch as well. So is there anything about commands? No, we can just copy all this patch said auto reconf configure and make and as long as the make configures uh, sorry as long as the make completes correctly then we know that all the previous commands have run successfully again because of these double and ampersands which are like a logical and and that looks like that's finished successfully so we just make install That's complete. Some packages check for package config file for libmad. This file is particularly needed so that CDR DAO can recognize the installed libmad. So we need to copy this package config file in as the root user. And that's that package done. So libao depends on the X window system which we're currently running because we're using it. Alsa, I believe that's the Alsa tools. Pulse audio, I'm not sure that we've installed that. Yes, we have. Let's check we've installed Alsa then. No, we've just installed Alsa lib. Uh, Oh, these are all optional, aren't they? I didn't think I installed Alsa. There are some uh, Alsa libraries and plugins and so on here. Um, as this is optional, I'm not going to install it. But uh, if you are to be using a real machine and keeping BLFS as a as a system to use, you, I think it's probably a good idea to install those Alsa libraries and uh, plugins and so on. So uh, we can go straight ahead and install libao then. Did I oh, didn't bring it down? Did I? So this looks like a fairly simple installation
So let's install it. Okay. And that's that one. So CDR DAO is the next one we can build. Now we've got the dependencies resolved. So configure and make, there's nothing to modify with the configure. Okay, so now we've become the super user again and install it and that's complete. So libisofs, no dependencies, just fetch and extract and install it. simple installation again. So now we can install it. And that's done. Lip burn. So this stands by itself. And once again, straightforward configure and make. Install it. So now we can uh, compile XF burn. So we go back to the XFCE directory and we get extract it. And once again, a nice straightforward configure and make. So now we can install that one. move on to Ristretto which is an image viewer so this needs libxif we've got that one we've got that one and this has just optional dependencies to build the documentation so we can go straight ahead and build this one now Uh, right, okay, this is a standard package, so it should be in the BLFS directory. If I try not to speak and type at the same time, I'll make a few mistakes, I think. So, okay, let's extract it. Okay. 
Okay, so this is another one we can just copy and paste what's given to us in the BLFS manual. And we can install that. So it says documentation was built and installed if you have the dependencies shown above. If you don't, there's a compressed table and source tree that can be unpacked into the user share doc libx, libx if 061, 0621 directory. So let's just take a look to see what actually happened out of interest. User share doc libx if, yeah. So it has, it shows that we have got Oh, actually, no, we haven't got Doxygen. I'm sure we haven't got that one. We've got Graphis, though. Uh, let's do a recursive search on that. All oh, right, they're all empty, those directories. So, yeah, it's it hasn't created them, which is what you'd expect. So it says if you haven't dependencies installed, there is a compressed table and source tree doc directory that can be unpacked into that directory. So let's cd into the doc. So it must be this one here then, it's the only compressed tarball in there. So if we push directory to that directory there, we can then do tar minus xvf on this directory and that file to extract it here. Right, permissions denied, so we need to do it as the root. Okay, so it looks like it's all in this single directory. Looks like we should be changing some permissions here as well. So let's make these owned by the root. Uh, root root minus r root xf. Of course, we need to do that as root. And then we need to make the directory uh, visible by others. So that directory needs to be changed to seven, seven, five. I think that'll be, yeah, seven, seven, five. Again, we need to do that as a root. So now anybody else who's not in the who's not the root user or in the root group can has got read access and can go down into that directory. And yeah, it looks like it's actual HTML documentation. Um, actually, none of these files are visible by anybody other than root. So let's go into that directory ls on cell yeah they're all not visible so if I try to do something like uh, let's try links index.html which is usually the parent file html so it says unable to access document so we need to do a chmod we can, all we need to do here is O for others and give them read access and we need to do that as root on all the files in this directory. So let's list that. And you can see we've got an R in this last bit where the other permissions are. So now if I recall that links command, we've got the uh, 
index page that's come up and we should be able to navigate around yeah that works fine so Q to quit and yes so if we pop the directory back pop D we should return to where we were and we can navigate back up and clean so we clean up this directory and now we can install Ristretto so we go back to the XFCE directory and download it and nice configure and make again and we can now install so now I've got a notification daemon to install I've got all the required dependencies so let's fetch it So again, configure and make. And install. And again, it's got, like before, there's a little test. So let's see if this one works. And yes, we've got a pop-up appeared in the corner here. So this one's working, whether the other one was faulty or whether there's a package we've installed in the meantime that's enabled this one to work, that would allow the uh, previous one to work, um, don't know, but at least, at least we've got one other working. So that's it, the next stage we've got is LXDE, before we move on to that one, uh, Let's go up in a new tab and just check that these applications we've installed, we can actually load them. So let's see what we've got, development network system. Oh, it looks like there's nothing actually updated here. So we need to run, there was a command wasn't there for updating the desktop was it one of these yes was it that one or was it one of these startup notification was it that one um, it was actually a gnome one I think just looked at isn't it uh, let's try searching for desktop see that one yeah it's this one 
so that just installs a directory we don't need to do that this could be the one that we need to do so we may even need to come out of this yeah it's still not updated any of these options here So let's come out of that terminal, close this down, close that down, and let's log out of this one and go back in again. Right, no, so this one obviously doesn't update automatically, so I can't remember what the configuration is for this, that's no doubt in the manual. But what we can do now is actually switch to the XFE, XFCE session because we have installed it now. We've installed the package, we just uh, the system, and we've installed five, I think it was five applications. So we can actually go to this one instead, and this should have those new applications installed. So there you are. There's the desktop. Welcome to the first start of the panel. The panel is something that appears below here, uh, just about where this menu pop-up is. So it says, use default config or one empty panel, let's use the default. And there it is. So it's actually created empty, oh, it hasn't painted the icons actually. I wonder if that's something we've missed out installing. It looks like some icons are missing because these should look different. But even if we didn't use this taskbar down here, we've got here, yeah, we've definitely got icons missing. These shouldn't look like this. Let's load the web browser. It needs a default one, other. Okay, there's a path to that. But there should be a, a link under Internet to see Monkey, which there is. So if we load that, you see it's loaded in the same place as it was before. And we should have some on the system. We've got LX terminal still as well, so we can load that up. In fact, let's put this back here and run top. I'll we'll have to shrink this down a bit because everything's a different position because we've got this taskbar at the top. It's pushed everything down a little bit. So we can just do new file, file new window from here. Move that over there. Uh, edit, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in. Okay, that should do. And you see the size of the windows appearing in the middle of the window now, which is a bit more, a bit more of a natural thing to do. So let's quickly look at these applications. So we've got parole. So that was a uh, sort of media editor, a uh, media player thing. So that'll be under multimedia. So there it is there. So that runs. You can see there's a play thing there. So I imagine if we had some media on here, we could view it or listen to it. So pretty standard media player. We've got the terminal we've already seen. Let's run it again anyway. There it is. So it looks pretty much the same as LX terminal, although there's different options. So it is a different program. Uh, the next one we've got is XF Burns, so that could be under multimedia. Yep. Right, it's identified, although we've got a CD player, we haven't got a CD writer, but there you can see it's uh, running. We could create a, an ISO with these two buttons, for example, but not actually burn them. Stretto, that was a 
graphics viewer, wasn't it? Yeah. So I don't know if there's any images. Uh, wouldn't know really where to look, to be quite honest. Maybe user share, there might be some stuff. Um, backgrounds. Yeah, there you go, there's one there. So that's the desktop background. And that's the one we're currently using, so that seems to work okay. can expand it and get a bigger size. I'm wondering if these icons are one of the optional packages that we didn't install. That could be what that is. So again, the optional packages is not a case of you don't need them, you may well need them, but they're not going to prevent the build from compiling or, or the program from running. And lastly, Notify D, we've seen that run as there was a little test. Uh, let's try running it again as we're in a new desktop environment. It should still work. Yeah, there it is. It's appeared again. So that's all good. Um, so let's get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. So let's carry on and run, uh, sorry, build LXDE. So again, this is a similar thing. We'll build the desktop first. There's fewer packages here than in XFCE. And then we build some applications. As you can see, we've built the last two packages just to get the LX terminal so I could make the fonts bigger. Uh, so there's five more packages to run there to, to build. So let's make a start. So again, it describes what LXD is and what its benefits are. And we've got a table of contents of the packages we're about to install. So let's start by going to sources and BLFS. And if you remember, we've got an LXD uh, directory, which we created before when we installed LX terminal and VT as well. So we'll download these things here. So the first package hasn't got any dependencies. So we could just copy these instructions as they are. There's nothing special to do here. So that's that one. Then. Oops. FM extra needs glib which we have so we just copy the link and install this one so with extra only disable all components but the lib fm extra library which is what they've selected GTK is not necessary for this package, so they've set that to no, so we can install this. Or rather build it, because now we're going to install it. And that's done. So next we do something called menu cache which has dependency of the package we just installed and two others which we've already got which are optional anyway so let's just grab this
so again pretty normal install and it's done flip fm okay this needs gtk3 auto and menu cache which we've got and we've got the other recommended packages and we happen to have all the optional ones as well Oh right, yes, we just I thought we'd just installed this. Yeah, it's one of the things, wasn't it? I think have I done something wrong here? What have I done? LibFM extra. Oh we installed it earlier something else that's probably what it is isn't it let's let's check let's do a an update db and just search for this library all right so it's not installed I don't know what's happened here have I downloaded it twice or something don't know why that's been downloaded twice so let's remove the copy and extract it so once again, oh, we've got an option here with GTK equals 3, selects a version of GTK plus to use, the default is GTK 2. Well, I'll go with the defaults, what they've got here, as they've not preferred 3 themselves. We'll stick with version 2. So now we can install. Requirements libfm recommended add way to icon theme or oxygen icons or LXD icon theme icons. So, have we already done? Yeah, I think we have downloaded the LXD icons, they weren't part of the LXD. Yeah, so we've already installed that one. So we've got one of the recommended 
and we've already got already got Fribidi, so that's okay. So let's copy that link. Download it and extract. And configure and make. install it so LX panel is next so lib binder we haven't uh, sorry key binder we haven't got that one recommended home screenshot which we haven't got flipx ml2 we've got wireless tools I'm not using wireless so it doesn't matter so let's do no screenshot. Needs GTK3 lib camera, which we've got. So let's come out of the LXDE directory. Download this GNOME package. So no, there's a build problem caused by a file installed by get text in LFS if get text was installed in instructions before April 11th 2018 version of LFS run the following as your root user so we haven't done that so we don't need to do it so we just need to run these commands in oh, okay it says lib camera gtk not found which I'm sure we had, we had installed compiled with gtk3 support and I thought I'd made an, an effort to ensure that that was the case uh, let's check we can see the library Yeah, the library's there, so um, the only thing I think of doing is to put a switch in saying enable GTK3, reinstalling that. So let's go back, remove that directory. Expand the Canberra. So we'll copy this configure command. We'll do let's copy this and change this to enable. Yes, I remember the screen note did say, yeah, enable GTK 3 plus. Anyway, let's run make again. And we'll just reinstall it and hopefully that will uh, fix it. Right, I did see an error there, yeah. Alright, oh, looks like it's these LA modules again. Libcambridge.k3.so file not recognised, file truncated. So 
so um, let's run that remove yeah that's got rid of a load again okay so let's rebuild the camera now didn't do the uh, GTK3 but we can check if I do control less quickly enough yep so it says enable GTK3 yes so it's definitely building it or it's aware of it at least right that hasn't failed this time and you can see information about GTK3 there so it's it's definitely looking at the libraries for GTK3 so sudo minus e we'll install that again all right yeah it's failing again on the install files being truncated symbolic link to dot dot one dot nine I don't know what's happened here. So I assume we haven't got that installed. That's why the GTK3 is not being found. So. No, it is. It is installing it. time and date so let's try doing this remove and then the install
we're still fighting. Uh, I can't explain this why this is not working. Looks like what's installing is not a complete file. And do we need this for screenshot that way? Yeah, compound with. Um, don't really know what to do this whether just to ignore it and uh, not install GNOME screenshot or to attempt to reinstall GTK3 because that's the only other connection those dependencies built Right, I think I'll try that and if, if this GTK Plus doesn't work and doesn't fix Canberra then although it's recommended I'm going to avoid uh, building this just to allow us to continue building the next panel well hopefully it will build without it so let's try that see if that works this is the sort of thing that you may come across a problem maybe something I've done enabled something or not enabled something uh, that's caused this problem so let's start with GTK plus version 3 Theme in. We've got the high colour theme. It's only needed for tests anyway. Oh, so is the other one. Yeah, I'm sure we've got all that. Okay, so let's just go with it. Let's check and see what the config finish with. That looks okay.
Okay, so that's finished. I'm going to install that now. Right, that's done. Just going to check this file exists. But it's only a purely a personal preference file. Uh, yes, it has got one there. So just quickly look at that. Yep, that's there. to run that LA file cleaner. I've never been so paranoid about that before because ne I've never had these problems. Uh, although I have run it occasionally before but not when I've needed to, only when I've remembered about it. So let's remove the Live Canberra ones and some GTK ones. So. so that's reinstalled. So uh, we'll just try the lip camera camera again. Okay, so it's got GTK3, yes. So let's build it. One other thing I've just thought of I could try is to disable the GTK support in case that has any effect. Still failing. No. So we lost attempt at trying to build this, so I'm gonna copy that. And disable GTK2. So, yeah, it's disabled now. So, make. Sort it fail. So I think unfortunately we'll have to try and see if we can get away with the uh, gnome screenshot. Uh, not being uh, available. Let's see if this, yeah, let's see that Canberra GTK tool has not been installed. anything might indicate what's going on here so it says relinking
it looks like when it's building this library it's the linker that's not recognizing it Yet the make doesn't seem to fail at all. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about this programming to understand exactly what's going on. So, uh, one last thing I can try is just to build it with a single thread, but I think I'm starting to clutch at straws here now. Um, normally I'd go and search on the internet for anybody else who's had this problem, but obviously I can't do that now, although what I could do is pause the video maybe and go and see if I can try and resolve it. Uh, but let's see if I can fix it just by running a single thread. I doubt very much if it will make any difference. So yeah, GTK3 is enabled. Let's make minus J1. So that didn't look any different to me. And no, it hasn't. Yeah, so I think what I'll do at the moment is I'll pause the video and return uh, if I, well, if and when I find anything. So I'll see you in a minute. I can a text back here again. Uh, well, yeah, I've had a look at the internet, um, which suggested looking at the config log, which I always forget to look at. Couldn't really find anything in there. Uh, but the strange thing is, I reran the install command again to get the error back to to reread it, and as you can see on the window now, it worked. There's no errors. So I can only put this down to another issue with the fact that this is being installed in VirtualBox. It's a, a strange thing that it should um, fail one moment and purely by, I can show you the commands that I've done. So that's the installation command that I just ran that worked. I viewed the config log and there's the prior installation that, that did work. Uh, sorry, that didn't work. And there's the make with one thread. So it's so weird that I can only put it down to the fact that this is a virtual box. Um, it's not the first thing that seems to apparently be causing some very strange things happening. Um, the only other thing I did was, as you can see, I've opened another private window from CMonkey to, to search this. This, fire, this problem. So I'll close that down now. As that's gone in, I'll take it that libcamera is in fact installed correctly. Um, and I shall 
go back to no screenshot and hope that that actually installs correctly. So let's get rid of this. Hopefully there's not too many more strange things like that that happen. They just throw me and it's just a waste of time really in the end. So let's extract this again. So let's see how we go. Well, yeah, that looks like it's it's worked this time. As I say, it's such a strange thing for it to suddenly happen. Um, the only thing, only time I've seen strange things like that happen is when I've had hardware that's faulty, normally memory that's faulty. You can, uh, I found that you can normally delete the um, source directory, do something slightly different, unpack the source directory, recompile, and it'll work because the compile is working on a different part of the memory where the fault is uh, doesn't exist, so it doesn't affect the build. But as I say, this this time I, all I did was open a new private window tab and view the log file, the configure log file, and that's the only thing I did. So it's very strange that it should suddenly work. It's got to be something to do with VirtualBox. I can't can't explain any other reason for it. So anyway, let's uh, now we can carry on install that. This could be this, uh, yeah. This could be the reason why these icons aren't appearing as I should do down here again because it's in a virtual box. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, and hopefully, it won't have uh, too much effect on any of the other packages we install. As I've already mentioned in one of the previous videos, I couldn't install or couldn't get the OpenJDK to compile, it just would not work. And yet, I've never had uh, problems with that before um, on real hardware. I've only seemed to have experienced it on, on the virtual box. Um, I did install, when I first started testing this around October or so, um, I was actually using Linux from scratch 8.3 and built most, well in fact more, more than what I'm building now for these videos now for BLFS 8.4 but I've, I've built most of BLFS 8.3 on a a real machine and um, didn't have any of these problems at all um, and between now and October there's only been you know a few uh, packages that would have been upgraded and there would have been incremental upgrades as well so I can't imagine it's any of them that are causing these issues and I didn't have this issue with LibCanberra before either when I when I tested this uh, about a month ago uh, in the virtual machine so, um, yeah, I can't explain it, like I say, apart from the fact that it's got the virtual box, unfortunately. So, let's go for this install. That's fine. So, that has built. We can do this keybinder one now. Uh, we've got Lua but it says currently broke because old Lua version is required so I think we can go with this so straightforward configure and make Okay, that's fine. So let's make install. And that's complete. Yep. Oh, right, okay. I didn't thought there was quite a few uh, directories there. I didn't uh, cl clean up um, no screenshot. So we 
we need to move the keybinder archive into yep that folder there and then go back to and remove the gnome screenshot directory so let's just check keybinder is there yep And now hopefully we can install LX panel. So let's go to the LXDE folder and wget that file. So just a simple configure and make again. Alright, okay, so it's saying it requires NetStat plugin requires wireless tools to veil. Uh, yeah, this is strange things happening again because I didn't have this before. What does this need? looks like we might be able to install this without worrying about the fact that we're not uh, uh, having any wireless tools or we haven't got wireless installed at all so let's remove this LX panel for the time being and try and install this wireless tools It says the kernel must be configured. Um, so we may have to, if things don't work, we may have to actually set the kernel up to use this uh, to allow this to work. Uh, so let's extract this. I wouldn't have thought that we'd need it, but you never know. Uh, so let's run the patch in and run make right that looks like that was okay so we just install so that worked don't forget to add user lib and to etc so conf well it's there by default so that's not a problem. So that's done. Right, so FXDE directory again and extract uh, Alex panel. Minus uh, XVF Alex panel. So let's retry this configure and make again. Okay, and we shall install that. It's all good. So LX appearance is the next package. Needs GTK we've got, Dbus Glib is recommended, we've got that, so we can go ahead and build this. So we can right, enable manuals, uh, man to install the manual pages if we've got the optional 
which we have so we can do that uh, enable dbus is there so let's copy that and add in enable man have some lovely man pages installed built and installed so debug no debug support yes okay so it doesn't recognize a disabled static switch so that may be something that's previously been uh, working and it's just not been the, the instructions haven't been updated for this version of uh, LX appearance but that's not a problem it's only a warning so let's build that and we can now install it LX session, so this is the session manager for LXDE. Um, requirements we've got dbus glib, lib unique we haven't got, I don't think. He says, but check. No, we've got something called unistring, so poke it optional. So I think we've got all of them anyway even though they're optional, so let's do this libunique uh, file require gtk got that, object introspection got that and we got that one, so we can just go ahead and fetch this oh and a patch as well okay so let us extract Lib unique so we've got patch auto recon for configure um, API documentation we're not going to do so we'll just copy the whole lot of this install that now and that's finished so lib session let's copy that link go back to the lxde directory and fetch the package and well that's interesting there's a switch here it says enable GTK3 which builds against GTK3 instead of GTK2 which is required anyway by libunique so it sounds like we should add, actually add that in. Or does it mean which GTK2 is required anyway by unique, lib unique? I'm not sure. Let's stick it in and see what happens. Okay, well that looks okay, so we'll just make this. Right, so it obviously did mean that GTK2 was the one it needed, so we'll have to start again, I think. Um, you may be wondering why I'm not using Make Clean. Sometimes that target's not available. Sometimes Make Clean only cleans part of the build. So to be properly sure, so there's so many packages and it'd be hard to know what each package 
is capable of. Um, I just find it so much easier just to remove the directory and start from scratch. Most of these are tiny packages anyway, they don't take more than a few seconds to expand and unpack. And it removes any doubts as well because you are starting from a known point, i.e. the tarball that was downloaded. So this time we'll just run it in with the configure as it is, which is obviously the sensible thing to do. That's what the BLFS editors have decided is the uh, preferred um, way of building. Yeah, that's worked. So let's do make install. And that's complete. Uh, what's, what's the next one? So the next one is LXD common. So this needs something called open box at runtime. We've got the high color theme already. I'm sure that's uh, yeah. I cut, is that what it was? High color theme or high color icon theme? Yeah, high color icon theme, that's okay. So, Openbox is a desktop window manager. It is one of the uh, options. I wasn't going to build it, but being as it's a um, uh, require requirement, as it is a dependency, we obviously need to build it. So, there's another one there which I'm not going to build, Sawfish. So this needs Windows system we've got, Pango we've got, and there's some optional ones there, which we've got a couple of them, a few of them. So let's go back to the BLFS and just grab this. So when this is installed, when we log out or log in again at the uh, login screen we will actually see open box as an option to, to select so fxorg prefix is not in user tell gcc about it so i can't remember where we set it now so let's have a look xorg prefix it's in user, so it's saying if it's not in user, tell GCC about it, so we don't need to run that. If you only s installed the Python 3 PYXTG module, con module convert one of the scripts to Python 3. Uh, I don't know what that means. All oh, right, okay, PYXDG 025, which is optional. So that's not there, so I'll guess that's not going to um, have any effect on anything things we've not installed PYXDG so we shall just quickly look at this yep we'll just accept the default config and make Right, so we can install that, and yeah, that's fine. Get rid of that. Go back to LXD common. Oops. Yeah, I've just bookmarked that page, haven't I? Uh, copy link. So let's get that, extract it, so 
So I've got some optional runtime de dependencies, just noted uh, notes there and some recommended ones, but we're covered by all of these. Display Manager, we've got both of them, so we're using it LXDM at the moment, so that's fine. So there's no options for the config listed, so we can just run that. And now we can install, make install. And it says if you've installed recommended dependencies, run the following commands. So what are the recommended dependencies? We've got that one and we've got that one. So we better run it, these three commands as the root. Right, that did something because it took a while to come back. Starting at XD again, you can start it from run level three using X init, or you can use Display Manager, which is what we're using at XDM. And it tells you how to do it if you want to start it from X init, the command, and again, um, how to control it with the VT terminals, virtual terminals. So we don't need to do anything else. Okay, so we've got a few applications to install next. As I say, we've already done two of these, which was for XFCE. So we've just got these five to install. The first one's an image viewer, and it just needs GTK2. So we shall grab that, extract it. And let's see, there's nothing else to add to the configure command here. We'll just run that in. Okay, that's done. So we can now install it. That's good. If you have XDG utils installed, which we have, let's just double check. Yep, we've got, well, at least we've got the tarball. I'm sure we have got it installed because we've seen a few packages that relied on it before. You should run the XDG icon resource force update theme high color command for the installed icon to be displayed in the menu item. So let's do that now. That's okay, there's no errors from that. So that's that one done. So on to the next one, LX Appearance OB Conf. All right, okay, this is to configure open box. So we've got the two requirements. Let's download that package. And extract it. Right, so straightforward configure and make. And let's install it. It's done. So LX input is the next one. Um, this is to configure the keyboard and mouse for LXDE. Requirement, the only one is GTK, we've got that. So again, let's go through the same routine again.
just waiting for Source Forge to wake up. Okay. So again, simple commands. It's done. We can install and clear up. So LX R and R needs GTK and XORG applications, which we've got. XSLT dot book dot put XSL we've got. So we're covered. Right, enable man, use this switch if you've installed optional dependencies. We've got them. We didn't install them for this. They, they were needed for something else, but they're there. Let's let's use them. And man pages are always a good thing. And make. And that's that one. That was quick. Make install. And it's done. So LX task, a lightweight desktop independent task manager. So just GTK2 is needed. Oops. So again, same same instructions, configure and make. and make install okay so the next one VT we've done LX terminal we've done because we're using it and that's it for LXDE so what we can do now is I'll shut this down I'll come out of this terminal and this one and we'll quit or log out of this session. We can actually save a session so that's quite handy. So I could have left the windows there and they would have been retained for next time. So log out. So now we've been using XFCE. If we open this you see there's a load more options. There's open box with GNOME, open box with KDE, there's open box by itself. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens when we choose that one. Right, it's quite a basic uh, desktop. The only thing you can do, there's no menus or anything, you just right click the menu and that is where the menus are. So the only thing is with this one, it's got like pre installed menu options. So for example, GIMP's there. Um, but of course we haven't installed that so it's not going to work so it's not quite as good Gwenview's not there we haven't installed that yet we will be installing that in fact I didn't have GIMP penciled in to install I'm not sure if that's in the BLFS book or not it would be a good one to install because it's uh, quite a comprehensive um, like a graphics package uh, OpenOffice will be or LibreOffice actually will be installing but again uh, maybe this shows this sort of um, how uh, basic this is that you have to go and edit this menu yourself Thunar, we've got Thunar, let's see if that runs, yeah it does so that's open box anyway so let's log out of that one uh, exit and let's go to LXDE which is what we've just been building and log in. So there, that's LXDE. Again, quite a nice interface. The background's not really designed for high resolution screens. It's a bit fuzzy, but uh, 
it's quite a nice environment. So we've got uh, we've only got waste bar basket on the desktop for any files we delete. This funny kind of I don't know what to call it bird looking thing like we've got here the logo of LXD that's the start button if you like to get access to the menu so you can see there's things we've seen there before uh, what's that one file manager so that's the piece that's one of the tools we um, uh, we've just built so if I get the browser up I was going to go through the same as I did before to show uh, what we've installed to show them running so uh, right, was it in? Let's go up one more LXD. Oh, yes, that's right, it's part of the desktops. I didn't realize this would be a separate package. Well, that's that's that uh, application that's running over here that we've just started. Help about see PC Man FM. So that's okay, and it's yeah, pretty pretty standard, usual sort of things for a farm manager. Um, there's what's this one? Do left click to iconify all windows. So yeah, that's basically just move, move them all down here. It's just shrunk them down as if I've just pressed the buttons, and then we've got some desktops, two desktops here. So. We're on the left hand one and click to switch to desktop two on the right. And then over this side there's like a little display with the CPU usage again. Uh, there's an audio control there which looks like it's muted. I can't actually hear anything so I'm not sure if that's working or not or if it doesn't make a ding sound when you modify it. Got the time calendar if you left click it and that will lock the screen and that's uh, to log out the session so let's have a look if we can find some of these other applications let's just look through application finder don't know what that does all right this is quite nice so it looks like we can search for applications here so if I put C in yeah it's found C monkey so we can see all the things that have been installed. There's that XF burner. And you'll notice also, although we've installed applications that are part of XFCE, they're available at any session, uh, any window manager in or any desktop environment, um, which is one of the beauties of this, of this system, the X window system, that everything's tiered, there's a hierarchy. Uh, so therefore everything kind of works with everything else. Um, we've also got a highlight, that's one of the packages we installed I think in the last video, I can't remember, I'm not even sure what it does. There's a code to format formatted text converter. Uh, I'm still not sure what that does. Input files, let's try. Oh, there's nothing there, I'm not sure if that would work. Convert files. No, I'm not going to do, do anything here because I don't know what it does. Let's read the readme. Alright, oh, it's a syntax highlighter, okay. All right, okay, so it looks like it's a, a syntax highlighter that you can customize with Lua scripts. Um, so may, maybe it's uh, for helping you design the the code to um, actually pick out the highlights. So it probably wouldn't have worked this far anyway, because it's a binary. So that's that one. Uh, so we've got a screenshot. That's the one we had trouble trying to... Uh, build because of the camera so take a screenshot that seems to have worked Let's save that yep there's a screenshot there so if I double click that yeah there's the image it's come up in one of the image viewers we've installed which is Ristretto so that's the one we installed for XFCE so that's obviously the default one at the moment 
So that's Fire Networks, okay. XF Burn, we've already seen that when we're in XFCE again. It's behaving as before, which is what you'd expect. So that's okay. Graphics, we've got Image Viewer. Okay, so it looks like this is probably the LXDE one, I think. Is it GPIC view? I'm not sure how we get a he help up on this. About there we go. I right clicked it. Yes, it is. So that's remembered the screenshot that was taken with um, uh, the screenshot utility we just used. So that obviously works. So that's that one we've proved working. Graphics, internet, programming. So we've seen parole and XF burn work. Right, there's a bulk rename which looks like it's part of that Thunar that might have been the extended part of the package that we installed. File manager of try, that X terminal we know works. Cups web interface. Okay, looks like there's some port needs opening for that. That's because I'm not really interested in getting the printing working. I think that was just a necessity. Task manager, that was one of the things we just installed, this LX task. So you can see it's a sort of basic task manager. See the current CPU usage and memory occupied and all the processes are running with the user, CPU, etc. So it's a bit like top, but in a graphical sense. We can select which user we want to view and so on. And even view the command line that was used to start that particular task. Um, File Manager we've seen, UX Terminal we've seen, XFCE Terminal we've seen as well. So, and we've got the original X term that we're using right at the very beginning. Preferences, now this will be, uh, I thought it was one of these. Not sure if it's that one there actually. But let's go into that so you can customize look and feel. Yeah, this is probably the appearance bit actually. Yeah, LX appearance. So we can, this is more than I believe we can do with any of the other um, desktop environments we've installed so far. We can modify the look. Then we've even got some pre configured uh, themes here. So we can even make LXDE look like XFCE if you really wanted that. So it's quite a few different schemes. The colors, icons, so Adwaita, that's one of the icon themes we installed. There's a lone one which is similar to Adwaita but slightly darker. High contrast, that may be for the visually impaired. Nuovi XT, that looks like the one we're currently using. They look quite similar, don't they? And Oxygen, which is the one that used to come with KDE. Or one of the earlier versions of KDE, I believe. Okay, mouse cursor, we can change what the mouse cursor looks like. In fact, you can see it's changing immediately as soon as I lick, click on it. So I'll just keep the standard one. And window borders, again, you can just configure to your heart's content. Color scheme and the looks. Even the title bar, how the text appears. So you can see that that title bar has gone to italic. Anti-aliasing, you probably always want that on. Hinting, you probably always want that on as well. And depending on the type of LCD screen you've got, if you have got an LCD, well, it looks like this. Oh yes, you can turn it off. If you're still on a an old cathode ray tube type monitor, you, you wouldn't want this. But um, there's all the different layouts for the different uh, sub pixels that. Uh, are used to enhance the image of a, an LCD screen. Um, there's a few other options there. So I won't save any of those settings, I'll just keep the default, happy with that. Um, let's go back to preferences, got default application settings, desktop preferences, all load of, not going to go through all these. Uh, there's even our screensaver that we were looking at in the previous video. 
with the preview so it's it's all there like I say there's nothing that can't be run uh, from one uh, or no pr program that uh, can be run from one that can't be run from another uh, they're all interchangeable so you just pick which interface you want and your programs are still there so that's more or less it uh, for this session um, there's only one other thing that I want to do which is left over from the last video it's just I don't know if you've used it yet but ghost script was one of the packages we installed and at the bottom of it there was a little test and all it does is it displays quite a nice picture on the screen and we didn't run that because at the time we were installing ghost script in a command prompt in a terminal so it had nowhere to display the image but if we type that command in now you get this lovely picture of a tiger which is what ghost script is it's a sort of um, like a vector type of imaging program I believe is it vector or bitmap as well I'm not sure now oh, for, oh that's right yeah sorry it's postscript data so it's a similar sort of uh, format that laser printer uses so that, that in theory that image could be sent directly to a laser printer as it is so that was the only other thing so that at least proves that ghost script runs I'm, like I said I'm not sure if anything else we're using here or anything else we've built has made use of those libraries I'm sure it has done because we would have uh, we wouldn't have probably wouldn't have built it anyway but it proves that the uh, front end is working so that's it I'm going to shut this down now and uh, I'll just put this back at the home directory ready for next time uh, yeah and next time my plan is to uh, go through installing some uh, actual uh, what I call heavyweight applications um, don't know how many I'll be able to do in, in the one session uh, I don't want to have a big session like I did the other day but my plan is to at least install, build and install Abbey Word, which is a kind of word processor. Let me get the uh, browser up again. So they're at the bottom here. Somewhere, yeah, Abbey Word. Numeric, I'm planning on installing, which is a spreadsheet. Uh, then I'm also going to go through LibreOffice, which is a complete office suite. So it's got its own word processor, spreadsheet, a drawing package. It's got its own database, uh, a couple of other things as well, I think. I can't remember exactly offhand. Uh, it's a big package. It'll take a couple of hours to install, I imagine. Uh, yeah, it's got a main... Uh, like front end for accessing you can just start that and then from there you can decide what what uh, type of file you want to be dealing with so it's got a database manager a spreadsheet a vector graphics editor oh yes that's right it's got a PowerPoint type presentations editor mathematical formula editor it's got an HTML editor and a um, word processing module as well um, and then there's a tool to manage extensions as well that you can add to LibreOffice so very comprehensive it's a good package um, I don't use and never have used every word in numeric I've always used in the past OpenOffice and now LibreOffice it's uh, what I use even on Windows when I use a Windows occasionally is what I use um, then um, I'd like to install again it all depends on time but I'd like to install Firefox as that's a a big heavyweight not in terms of its size but it's a big hitter in the browser um, market if you like so that would be nice to install uh, oh there's GIMP so I haven't got that down to install so that would be a good one it depends already again I suppose on time um, in fact I might even do in Inkscape as well that's a very good vector editor package 
I'll definitely be doing Thunderbird. Good, very good email client, uh, free email client. That, again, from the Mozilla people who do Firefox and SeaMonkey. Um, and I think apart from that, um, I may install the odd tool or utility, maybe some of the command line tools that are quite interesting, which will only take you know a few minutes of time. Uh, things like smart mon tools, if I can find it, which allows you to look at the smart data for your hard disks. That can be quite useful if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, there's one that's quite useful screen if you're sitting at terminal doing a lot of stuff at the uh, uh, X term terminal or any terminal for that matter, where you can uh, multiplex sessions, have several sessions you can. Uh, attach the terminal to it's quite a useful thing especially useful if you want to leave something running and turn off the computer because the machine that's running screen will uh, retain the session as it's running and then you just come back next time turn your machine on connect to that screen session and it, it will still be there running or or finished as, as the case may be whatever you've been doing so uh, so I'll just sort of play it by ear um, and oh, I might, yeah, I might have a go at doing this open JDK, but I'm not counting on it working uh, as I had so many problems before when I was testing it. Uh, saying that, LibreOffice needs Java, and it did fail a couple of times, but I managed to get it going just by rebooting the virtual machine and just re redoing the make command so that it carried on and it did seem to work. There didn't seem to be any problems with that, so hopefully, the, that won't cause too many problems when we come to build it and finally the last thing I'm going to do is um, build KDE which is basically there's arguably there's three things here there's the frameworks there's applications and then there's Plasma 5 which is the actual front end um, so that will be a bit that probably yeah that that'll definitely be one session by itself that's a, a huge application so until next time um, I'm going to shut this down, so I'm going to use this little log out button, so I can lock the screen, log out, and I'll shut down the session. Yeah, until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the few hiccups there's been this time, but as you can see, I, I don't think it's anything that we've done. Um, it's, I think it's been more to do with um, VirtualBox, unfortunately. It's such a strange error I had before. Uh, I can't account for any reason why that should suddenly work after just uh, just basically viewing a few other commands. Um, but anyway, thanks one, once again and see you next time. Goodbye.